Inilah Indonesia Negeri dengan berjuta keragaman Yang membawa berjuta harapan Disinilah tempat berpadunya asa dan cita-cita dari penjuru Nusantara Bersama kami berikan kontribusi nyata lewat inovasi, karya cipta, dan pencapaian lain sesuai bidang ilmu Dari UI, untuk Indonesia yang toleran, unggul, dan bermartabat Selamat datang di Universitas Indonesia Dari masa ke masa, Universitas Indonesia terus tumbuh dan berkarya sehingga menjadi salah satu institusi pendidikan yang terbesar, terbaik, dan terdepan di Indonesia dan Asia. Di sini, di Universitas Indonesia, berhimpunlah putra-putri terbaik bangsa. Dari beragam latar belakang, kami bangun sebuah komunitas intelektual yang saling memperkaya hasanah pengetahuan dan nilai kemanusiaan. Untuk mendukung pengembangan generasi yang unggul, Universitas Indonesia menghadirkan fasilitas penunjang studi bertaraf internasional serta mengimplementasikan teknologi tinggi untuk mendukung riset dan perkembangan industri. Kampus Universitas Indonesia juga dapat diakses oleh semua, tak terkecuali penyandang disabilitas. Sebagai komitmen kami dalam mewujudkan pendidikan inklusif, dengan dukungan moda transportasi yang ramah lingkungan, dan inisiatif penggunaan sumber energi terbarukan, Universitas Indonesia kian mengokohkan diri menjadi kampus hijau yang mendukung pembangunan berkelanjutan. Universitas Indonesia juga menjalin kemitraan dengan berbagai stakeholder guna menghadirkan kemudahan dan kenyamanan bagi segenap sivitas akademika. Karena setiap insan adalah unik dengan bakat dan minat yang beragam, Universitas Indonesia membuka peluang sebesar-besarnya bagi tiap individu untuk menggali dan mengembangkan talentanya. Dengan dukungan ragam fasilitas dan unit kegiatan mahasiswa, Universitas Indonesia mendorong semua mahasiswa untuk mewujudkan mimpi dalam prestasi. Bersama, kita rangkul keberagaman menjadi energi untuk masa depan bagi sesama, bangsa, dan dunia. Universitas Indonesia, rayakan keberagaman. Universitas Indonesia, veritas, probitas, justisia.
bersama kampus Merdeka di Universitas Indonesia. Ui bangun masa depan bangsa Indonesia Jaya. Kita tuntut ilmu dan berkarya di Universitas Indonesia. Bangun semangat baru di Universitas Indonesia Maju bersama kampus Merdeka Di Universitas Indonesia Di bangun rasa depan bangsa Indonesia jaya Kita tuntut ilmu dan berkarya Sementara di Universitas Indonesia bersama tunjukkan makanya mengembang nama putra putri bangsa gelora semangat Nusantara di Universitas Indonesia. Perpustakaan Universitas Indonesia terletak di pusat kampus Universitas Indonesia Depok. Dekat dengan Fakultas Ilmu Komputer, Gedung Rektorat UI, dan juga dekat dengan Danau Kenanga. Perpustakaan yang kami banggakan ini menyimpan lebih dari 940 ribu koleksi dalam bentuk buku teks, e-book, jurnal, karya ilmiah, bahkan naskah dan buku klasik. Seluruh sivitas akademika UI dapat mengakses koleksi tersebut secara gratis. Terdapat empat lantai yang dapat dimanfaatkan oleh sivitas akademika Universitas Indonesia untuk mengakses koleksi perpustakaan. Di lantai satu, kamu bisa membaca koleksi tematis dan karya guru besar UI. Di lantai dua, kamu bisa membaca dan meminjam koleksi buku teks dari berbagai disiplin ilmu dengan durasi peminjaman dua minggu dan dapat diperpanjang sebanyak dua kali. Kamu pun dapat membaca koleksi Wiana, yaitu koleksi hasil penelitian mahasiswa sebagai syarat kelulusan. Kamu juga dapat mengakses koleksi khusus, jurnal, dan referensi yang ada di lantai 4. Tak hanya dimanjakan dengan hampir satu juta koleksi, Sivitas Akademika Universitas Indonesia juga dapat memanfaatkan fasilitas yang begitu lengkap. Seperti ruang internet, ruang kubikus, ruang naskah, dan ruang belajar mandiri. Perpustakaan juga menyediakan teknologi untuk mempermudah pembelajaran seperti fasilitas peminjaman mandiri dan juga Uiana Digital Program. Tak lupa perpustakaan memiliki layanan pencegahan plagiarisme. Layanan ini membantu kamu agar karya kamu tidak terdeteksi plagiat. Sesuai SK Rektor nomor 208 tahun 2009, plagiarisme adalah tindakan seseorang yang mencuri ide atau pikiran yang telah dituangkan dalam bentuk tertulis dan atau tulisan orang lain dan digunakan dalam tulisannya seolah-olah 
Ide atau tulisan orang lain tersebut adalah ide, pikiran, dan atau tulisan sendiri sehingga merugikan orang lain. Karena mengunggah karya akhirmu menjadi salah satu syarat kelulusan, Perpustakaan UI menyediakan layanan unggah UIANA, di mana layanan ini membantu menyelesaikan berbagai permasalahan terkait pengunggahan karya akhirmu sesuai pedoman penulisan tugas akhir. Tidak unik jika bukan perpustakaan UI. Di sini, kamu bisa menemukan bank, coffee shop, dan kantor pos untuk menunjang kegiatanmu juga loh. Nah, itu dia sekilas tentang perpustakaan Universitas Indonesia. Jangan lupa ya untuk follow Instagram dan Twitter kita di at UI underscore library. Semoga bermanfaat! Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, please be ready. We will sing the national anthem Indonesia Raya. We are hoping that this webinar runs smoothly and also beneficial for attendees. Let us begin by reading a prayer. Prayer start. Finish. Welcome to the UI Library International Webinar, The Role of Bibliometrics in Library and Information Research and Services. 
I am Lulu Triwulandari, your moderator for today. Before we begin, I would like to regret Professor Dr. Rernat Abdul Haris, Vice Rector of Academic and Student Affairs, Universitas Indonesia, and our Honorable Speaker, Mr. J.C. Xiao and Ms. Sina Yang from the University of Hong Kong Libraries, Ms., uh, Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail from University Science Malaysia, Ms. Sarah Chering, and Ms. Francie Naud from University of Melbourne, and Mr. Ma Muhammad Prabu Wibowo from Universitas Indonesia and, and Florida State University, and Mrs. Maria Esos M. Hum, as the head library of Universitas Indonesia. And all of the respectable participants of international webinar, the role of bibliometrics in library and information research and services. This webinar is supported by iGroup, Elsevier, and UI Store. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the agenda for today. The first agenda are the opening remarks from our vice rector and head of library. And then we will, we will listen to the presentation from the speakers, which will be followed by a question and answer session. There will be a quiz for participants at the end. And after that, we will conclude the webinar and have a photo session. This webinar can also be watched on the UI library, your YouTube channel youtube.com slash perpustakaan UI. All right, everyone. Now we are going to listen to the opening and welcoming speech delivered by Vice Rector of Academic and Student Affairs, Universitas Indonesia. We would also like to request to Vice Rector to open the international webinar, the role of bibliometrics in library and information research and services. Please welcome. Profesor Dr. Renat Abdul Haris. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Salam kebajikan, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Very good morning to you all. Distinguished speaker, Mr. JC Xiao from University of Hong Kong, Miss Sarah Sering and Miss Friends, you know, the, coming from University of Melbourne, and Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail from University of Science Malaysia, and Mr. Muhammad Prabu Wibowo from Universitas Indonesia, and also affiliated with Florida State University, and moderator of this webinar, Ibu Lulu from Librarian of Universitas Indonesia, and we would like to respect to Chairman of the Association of Librarians and Academic Libraries in Indonesia, lecturer and student of Universitas Indonesia, and head of UI Library, Ibu Maria, and distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen. Praise be to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for His permission. We all have gather here today for the international webinar series to organize by University of Indonesia Library. And with the theme of the role of bibliometric on library and information research and services on this Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Bibliometric analysis use one quantitative method to measure, track progress, and analyze scientific literature. Through this method, we can identify the development in the field of science, identify influential authors or researchers in their field, as well as the most productive journal based on their subjects. Referring to the development of more active role of librarians in research activities and scientific and scientific communications, bibliometric analysis is very increasingly being applied in various libraries. For example, to develop the library collections. However, the focus of 
bibliometric activities in academic libraries has no change from what was previously previously used for collection developments to research evaluation for researchers, research group, department, and universities. Ladies and gentlemen, the application of uh, bibliometric analysis in academic libraries has several benefits uh, providing information trend of scientific research, evaluating research performance in universities, and analyzing publication output from collection of repositories and publication database. Those bibliometric analysis can be used to create new knowledge and also assist decision making. For example, increasing the influence and reputation libraries at universities, also increasing university ranking in local and international schools. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the research is one of uh, the component assists by university accreditation and ranking. So, Universitas Indonesia need to evaluate leading research topic of the universities so that can compete with the other universities. Besides, Universitas Indonesia have strategic role in supporting Indonesia to achieve the SDGs by 2030 as education system. Universitas Indonesia are responsible for implementing the SDG schools by improving the quality of education. Those bibliometric analysis can inform us how to make right decision for better development outcome for our institutions. One of the units in higher education that plays a role in providing knowledge and information services is the libraries. Libraries can actively contribute to provide the information related brand research and also the any discipline or institutions has many research and potential for collaborations and all the important information. The theme of this webinar, the bibliometric analysis on library and information science research, which describe the important role of university libraries in education, especially in providing new knowledge and get the right decision making for internal between other units, and also to support the goal of the SDGs and increasing university ranking. Universitas Indonesia is fully committed to support all development programs and activities carried out by UNIT at Universitas Indonesia to achieve an international standard university. We hope that this webinar will provide an in-depth knowledge to all participants regarding the role of libraries in supporting bibliometric analysis and to serve as lesson to give insight for librarians and information professional in Indonesia and overseas. Librarians can study how to harvest data from public sources, how to analyze data use software and visualization tools. Those we also hope that librarians particularly Universitas Indonesia librarian can start actively participating in research and also collaborate with lecturer to provide this information. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we would like to express my century appreciation to all parties, especially to the speaker, moderator, the head of UI library, participant of the webinar, this webinar and the committee. This event would have been impossible without the support of each and everyone present here. And as requested by the committee, 
on behalf University of Indonesia by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, the second series of international webinar by them, the role of bibliometric in library and information research and services is officially open. I wish everyone a successful, safe, and fruitful webinar. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Om Santi Santi Om Namo Buddhaya Salam Kebajikan. Thank you very much, Professor Abdul Haris. And uh, now we are going to listen the brief introduction of the webinar delivered by Head of Universitas Indonesia Library, Mrs. Maria Esos M. Hum. Please welcome Mrs. Maria. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mrs. Lulu. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, Lulu? clearly. Yes. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Very good morning to you all. Welcome to the international webinar. We really appreciate your presence here because in the midst of your busy schedule, you are pleased to take the time and network to attend the webinar. Respected Vice Rector for Academic and Student Affairs, UNTAS Indonesia, Professor Dr. Refnat Abdul Haris, Master of Science, distinguished speakers, Ms. Tina Yang and Mr. Jesse Xiao from the University of Hong Kong. Good morning, Ms. Tina and Mr. Xiao. Uh, Ms. Sarah Kering and Ms. Francine Note from University of Melbourne. Pleased to meet you, Ms. Sarah and Ms. Francine Note. Thank you. And yes, and Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail from University Sain Malaysia. Apa kabar Pak Ismail? Okay, and Mr. Muhammad Prabu Wibowo from Universitas Indonesia. And whom I respect to, Chairman uh, of the Association of Librarian and Academic Libraries in Indonesia, lecturer and student of Unitas Indonesia. Moderator of this webinar, Mrs. Uh, Lulu Triwulandari, Librarian of Unitas Indonesia, and of course, distinguished participant of this international webinar. Praise be to be Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for His permission. We all have gathered here today for the international webinar series uh, number two, organized by the University of Indonesia Library with them, uh, the rule of diplomatics on library and information research and services. Wednesday, September twenty first, twenty twenty two. Ladies and gentlemen, bibliometric analysis is the application of mathematical and statistical methods to books, journal, and other publication. In libraries and higher education institutions in Indonesia, bibliometric analysis is applied to analyze the use of collection, find out the development of research and certain topics, and help analysis the needs of the teaching curriculum in library science study program. In 2022, UNTAS Indonesia Library hold a series of national and international webinars on digital transformation of academic libraries. This main topic includes 10 subtopics for seven national webinars and three international webinars. The topic of the second international webinar is the rule of bibliometrics on library and information research and services. This international webinar to gain knowledge and insight on the basic of bibliometric analysis, data sources, and how to harvest its bibliometric analysis and visualization tools. Also to explore more about the role of bibliometric in library and how to build a career as a library and information professional. Distinguished guests, today we invite six competent speakers, namely Mr. Muhammad Prabu Wibowo, his PhD candidate, research 
assistant and instructor at Florida State University, lecturer at University of Indonesia. Mr. Prabhu will be present about introduction to bibliometric and how to harvest bibliometric data from publicly available sources. And Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail, senior librarian at Hamsah Sendut Library, University Sain Malaysia. He will present about introduction and demo of bibliometric analysis software and visualization, visualization tools, for example, Force Viewer, Publish, or Paris. Then Mr. Jesse Xiao, Head of Scholarly Communication and Research Services, and Ms. Tina Yang, Associate Librarian, Learning and Research Services, the University of Hong Kong Library. They will present about introduction to bibliometric and research impact services in academic library. And Ms. Sarah Sering and Ms. Francie Notes, Lesion Librarian, Research Support, University of Melbourne. They will share about librarian career prospects as bibliometric analyst or bibliometrician and the role of bibliometrics in academic library. Ladies and gentlemen, the participant of the webinar are library director or manager, professional organization manager, librarian, archive, and other library of information science professional. The duration of this webinar is three hour 30 minutes and this event is free uh, and participants will get electronic certificate, material and for the lucky participant will get souvenir from us. Ladies and gentlemen, before I end, I would like to express my gratitude to all parties, especially to the Vice Rector for Academic and Student Affairs at UI. Uh, speaker and moderator, UA library partner, participant, the coordinators, the chief of the committee, Ms. Nur Intan, and the person in charge of the second international webinar, Ms. Dita Garnita, and all the committee that I cannot mention one by one who have prepared everything so that today's second series of international webinar can run well. Welcome to the webinar. Hopefully, it will be useful. Thank you very much. Wabillahi taufiq walidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam Om Santi Santi Om Namo Buddhaya. Salam Kebajikan. Thank you very much, Mrs. Maria. The next session is a photo session. I would like to invite the Honorable Vice Rector of Academic and Student Affairs, Universitas Indonesia, and our honorable speaker, Mr. Jesse Xiao, Ms. Tina Yang, Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail, Ms. Sarah Chering, Ms. Francie Naud, and Mr. Prabhu Wibowo. And also the head of library, uh, Universitas Indonesia, Ms. Mrs. Maria. And Mr. Hanafi, you may lead the photo session now. Okay. Photo session, I will start. One, two, three. Next. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hanafi. Don't forget that this webinar can be organized uh, with the support of iGroup. Elsevier and UI Store. Uh, now, before we start, uh, that is, uh, before we start, I'd like to remind all of the participants to please keep up your mic off during the webinar session. Please rename your display name as sound on screen. If you have any question or comments, please submit your question on the Slido link, which will be sent by the committee in the chat box. And don't forget to mention your name and institutions because three selected question and answer participants will get exclusive souvenir from UI library. So let's begin our session today. First of all, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, 
joining with us uh, from Florida, USA, we have Mr. Prabhu Wibowo. And next from Malaysia, we have Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail. And from Australia, we have Ms. Sarah Chering and Ms. Francine Out. And last but not least, we have Mr. Jesse Xiao and Ms. Tina Yang from Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us today. And the first one to speak is Mr. Prabhu. Mr. Prabhu, uh, he's a lecturer and researcher from the Department of uh, Library and Information Science, University of Indonesia. Now he is a candidate research assistant and instructor in Florida State University. Today, Mr. Prabhu will introduce us to bibliometric method and how to harvest bibliometric data. Now, please welcome Mr. Prabhu. Okay, Mr. Prabhu, you have uh, 30 minutes. Well, hello everyone. Good morning Hi. to those of you in Indonesia. Can you, uh, and good evening from Florida. And uh, actually I'm really happy to be here and thank you for the Library of University of Indonesia for having me here to share my um, study about bibliometrics. So um, thank you, Ms. Mrs. Sulu for uh, the introduction. And can you see my screen right now? Yes, clearly. Okay, okay, great. So yeah, uh, it's nice to uh, meet uh, all of you here through, even though it's uh, through uh, Zoom, Zoom meeting, but uh, I hope you can, uh, we can discuss, it's actually a discussion about bibliometrics, so uh, I will, it's my, in this uh, session, I would like to introduce a little bit introduction about bibliometrics and how to harvesting data. And all of my materials uh, I uploaded to, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see this, but I uploaded to the, uh, uh, to the Google Drive and I put the link in the, in the slides. And I think the committee will share the materials after the after it's finished. So uh, welcome again, and I would like also to thank about to thank to Ibu Maria and and uh, the committee as well, and Ibu uh, Clara, the person who contacted me about oh would you, uh, can you uh, uh, what is it pretend about bibliometrics? Oh yeah, I'm really happy to be to share with all of you here. So thank you very much for the Library of University of Indonesia and the committee and uh, also the University of Indonesia, uh, Vice Rector and everyone, and all of you participants for being here. So um, even though I've been introduced briefly uh, by uh, Mrs. Lulu, so yeah, my background is actually from library sciences. Uh, during my bachelor, I did my uh, library sciences at the University of Indonesia, and I continued to, well, I can say uh, a little bit jump into computer science and information science. Uh, and then I uh, I come back again to the to the roots of library science in in the Florida State University, but my study focus is actually on the open health data repository, and I'm currently uh, teaching uh, teaching as a uh, graduate instructor at Florida State University for uh, for courses related to IT, uh, for example web app development. I teach about how to develop API. So uh, like gathering data, so harvesting data is actually related to what we are discussing right now. And I also teach about like, uh, and do research on data mining, biblio mining, social media mining, uh, and related to about data. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, brief information about me. So, well, actually I would like to present my, I would like to uh, structure my presentation into what uh, I hope, uh, very simple, it's about um, 5W1H. So what is bibliometrics? Who use bibliometrics? Why do we use it? When was introduced and when to use it? Where to get the data, data and how to do it? So it's actually a simple discussion and I, I hope I could, we could uh, trigger more uh, for the discussion based on the, the slides. So bibliometrics actually, um, 
consists of, as you all know, it consists of uh, Biblio and Matrix. So Biblio is, uh, etymologically, it's from a Greek, which, which means book, and Matricos or Matricos is uh, meaning of measurement. So yeah, the word of Biblio Matrix uh, is actually has been coined by Pritchard in 1969. The definition of the bibliometric itself is the application of mathematical, mathematical and statistical methods to books and other media communication. Well, at that time, the media that we all know is mostly about books, but now it's beyond books. If you see or if you uh, browsing uh, bibliometrics, there are researchers who apply bibliometrics to such as YouTube videos. So we can apply it to many things, to many media. So, uh, but the most common media that we found in bibliometric studies are in journals, in journals because we can uh, study about how, uh, the citation and the number of citation, but it's similar to other metrics application like scientometrics, informetrics, and webometrics. It's about metrics, about uh, statistical and uh, mathematical tools to implement it into the media. So now it's beyond books it can be uh, applicable to many things. So um, bibliometric, bibliometrics data, what to collect? So maybe uh, since bibliometrics is commonly found in uh, journals, so we can see here, uh, journals, uh, this is the common layout of journal, what we can gather from here. So basically most journals have structured data. They consist of title, authors, abstract, uh, publication info or uh, source info or journals. We can also get references, publication year. It's all appear in many uh, journals, papers. So uh, in the cumulative, we can actually gather a lot of data. So we can get all of this data from any database. So we can, most literary database have those, uh, have this bibliometric data that we can measure uh, for example, this is the example of the data that uh, we can get from Scopus, but many other databases have similar uh, data. So we can as we can analyze any uh, data, bibliometrics data from many literature databases. So where where do we, do we get bibliometric data? So actually, there are a lot of uh, little sources that we can use. So for example, the most common, uh, the, the biggest one of the biggest sources that we can use is uh, our uh, web of science and scopus those are the two of the biggest sources that we can use but uh, those both of the sources web of science and scopus require subscription so uh, but since you are uh, if you are uh, requiring uh, subscription you can contact the library of indonesia but you can also get those data from for example like google scholar pubmed or mendeley importer and one of the applications that we will be that we will be demonstrated, publish or Paris or dimensions. So there are a lot of sources, but we also we have to consider several things such as access and strength of and weaknesses. For 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 example, uh, we can compare them. Like for example, Web of Science. Well, um, they are good for science, technology, social sciences, arts and humanities. And Scopus. They're good for uh, medical, and I think uh, the PubMed is also good for medical uh, journals or medical sources. But uh, so if you see the coverage, so those are the aspects that we have to consider when we choose the uh, sources and compatibility with software. If we want to use, for example, uh, Fosfewer, the uh, so Fosfewer is compatible with most of sources, for example, Web Science and Scopus. So those are the things that we have to consider before we choose how to get the data. So um, after we get the data, now it's, uh, let's say, uh, so we have to remember that bibliometrics is about statistical methods. So we can, uh, and mathematics uh, to the bibliographic data. So those are the three concepts that we have to understand. So we can apply a lot of things. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we can apply the descriptive, uh, analysis for, uh, or inferential statistics, and so, uh, but it depends on the what what we are trying to achieve or our objectives. So it also depends on the, our research questions 
and depends on software app that we would like to use, type of data. Uh, for example, data that we have, is it numerical, nominal, ordinal? So we have to think about it. So for example, but we can analyze, for example, uh, the, uh, the most basic one, such as descriptive, for example, if we want to, use, we want to check the productivity rates, we can use the compare the year and also the number of publications. And most of you might often see that bibliometrics is about like, for example, in the uh, bottom right corner here, which is, it, it is called uh, social network analysis. Well, if you search uh, bibliometrics, yes, most of the analysis are uh, done in social network analysis, but uh, it can also be done with descriptive uh, things such as like a bar chart and everything. So for, for most, but bibliometrics uh, can be analyzed with social network analysis. It requires actually two, uh, two aspects. We can say uh, the first one is the nodes itself, like the dots. Uh, it can uh, it can in the bibliometric can be entity, can be actor, thing within the network, or oh yeah, author, publisher, uh, or institution, and everything. And there's a connection between all the nodes. It's called edges, links, or uh, ties. It's basically to uh, explain the relationships or the interaction. So, for example, the citation, which uh, literature cite which. So it could be collaboration with between uh, authors and number of relationships could be, uh, can be also uh, explaining about the strengths. If you see here, the lines can be like bigger or uh, bolder or the, the note itself can be bigger. So it explains about those kinds of relationships between nodes. So we can, for example, uh, we can do the citation analysis in bibliometrics. So for example, um, there are backward, uh, chaining or backward uh, citation. So we, we can do the retrospective study, like for example, if we want to check a paper, which paper uh, that been used or cited by this paper. And then we can also do the forward analysis. So uh, this is like more into the current time or uh, for this paper is cited which to which paper. So it can be, these are the, the example of uh, the social network analysis. And there are a lot of other aspects where we can implement our uh, social network analysis. So for example, we can also implement the co-authorship is to uh, explain about the collaboration between uh, authors. We can also, from based on the uh, collaboration, we can get the clusters or regions of uh, those collaborations. And there are also keyword occurrence, like for example, one paper, for example, consists of uh, several keywords. It can be also uh, consist other keywords that is also in other papers. So those kind of, uh, it uh, explains about the relationship of between papers or between media. So this is the basics about uh, bibliometrics. And we can also implement the bibliometrics with, to uh, bibli uh, bibliographic coupling. So this is to identify like authors in related fields and it's to show paper similarity. For example, there's two, uh, there are two papers, uh, paper A and B, they cite many, sim many similar papers. So it implies that uh, there's, a, there's a similarity between paper A and paper B. So those, uh, the, the first, uh, this is also the example of how to apply bibliometrics uh, to, to know about the bibliometric, uh, bibliographic coupling. And the other is co-citation. So it is also about uh, identifying uh, authors in related fields, also the similarity of papers. So, uh, but for the co-citation is if to check if, uh, if paper A, uh, if there are two papers, they are cited by many papers. So it implies that paper A and B is, is all, are similar. So we can do, we can implement uh, bibliometrics uh, to this kind of uh, coupling and also co-citations. So the next one, after we understand uh, what kind of data that we collect and also um, what kind of analysis, now, now we have to understand what kind of tools or software that we can use. So actually there are a lot of application and software in bibliometrics. The most basic one is uh, maybe you use it like a daily. It is uh, the Microsoft Office Excel. Well, Microsoft Office Excel is more, mostly underrated in bibliometrics, but 
uh, trust me, we, uh, Excel is very powerful right now. If you see, uh, if you browse through YouTube, the implementation of Excel, you can make Excel into anything. You can do, you can make an application dashboard to, uh, based on Excel. But uh, there are specifically made a software or tools that can be can we use for bibliometrics. So, for example, Bib Excel is more into um, the add-ons to the Excel, and then also there are his his site and site space GPN, uh, uh, the one that we will we will be demonstrated is published on Paris and also Post Viewer. So. Um, we also need, uh, uh, similar to sources, bibliographic sources, there are things to consider when we decide to use which application. So we can, we have to consider the compatibility with operating system. For example, if we have Mac OS or we have Windows, or it also depends on our objective. If he only wants to know like basics, like the productivity rate, we can use just Excel, for example. And there are also, it's about preferences as well. So, for example, uh, there are a lot of application, right? Uh, for example, Microsoft Office, they are also open source, uh, like Open Office. In the end of the day, we just use it only one. Like, if you are prefer to use Office, it's well, just keep using it. So, there are a lot of softwares, but don't worry, uh, those are very similar. Uh, if you can do or if you can uh, use one, that's that's fine. Just keep using them. So, uh, and also we have to uh, take measure on the compatibility of data sources. So for example, if we decided to choose first viewer, first viewer is uh, compatible with uh, Web of Science and uh, Scopus. So this is the example of the uh, screenshot of what we can do with uh, Excel and also with the first viewer. So some of you, uh, since we already know the basics, it requires us to use software and bibliographic data. So maybe you will keep wondering why bibliometrics? So bibliometrics has a lot of purposes or benefits. So we can, yeah, for example, as uh, we can identify like the trends, like, I mean, we, by measuring the years, oh, we can know the, about the trends. So for example, if we are in, just into the specific field, I would like to know, for example, what kind of trends and the future I can predict or like identifying the emerging fields or maybe just to understand which, what's going on with, uh, with papers, with authors in specific fields. We can also understand about productivity or key uh, important uh, key, key authors in the specific field. And uh, we can understand about the impact factor and also it's about knowledge discovery. And also uh, we can understand clusters of topics in a specific field, we can understand about collaboration. If you, for example, if I want to apply in the, uh, for example, I would like to uh, apply to the next, my uh, study, for example, postdoc, I need to know uh, which university that I should choose in the future. So it, it can be applicable to many, uh, many things. Bibliometrics is very useful these days. So um, uh, we use it, we use bibliometrics. So I, this, uh, divided the users into three uh, levels. So most of us here are, I believe, uh, consists of researchers. And uh, so it's very useful for authors, researchers to publish, uh, to collaborate, to understand the research trends, yeah, to know the key authors. And for librarians, I believe there are a lot of librarians here. Librarians, very, uh, We'll use bibliometrics for a lot of things. For collection managers, for example, which collection that we have the most, that we have the least, so we can uh, add it in the future. It can be in, uh, implemented to reference services. And for institutional levels, we can, for example, departments and schools. So if you are a manager, a manager in the university, you can use it for recruiting. Recruiting, uh, for example, there's a someone apl applying for a professor in a university, you can track record of what kind of, uh, oh, what year uh, this, the person uh, be become very high productivity, what's, you know, like some kind of things. And for example, research office, I've been in the, in the uh, research office, they, we use it, we use Bibliomax all the time. So for example, for research grant, for, uh, to measure, uh, uh, the, to maintain the outputs, and also for journals and publishers, they can, they know the impact factors. 
and for governments uh, to know because most of governments uh, know uh, they give grants so they know the return of investment so it's for grant applications so there are a lot of uh, users and also applic applications of bibliometrics so where to begin and how so um if you see bibliometrics uh, books there are a lot of uh, what is it? There are a lot of steps, but I make I make this into very simplified steps. So it's uh, considered of four steps. So the first one is planning. Planning is like uh, we have to decide the topics, and the themes, and have we have to search. So it's to prevent reinventing the wheel. So we have to know if there is another publication that already did. maybe there's a uh, publication that already did it. So we have to check if others have done it or before or or not. And we have to develop our uh, research protocol, or it's similar, similar to a proposal. And we have to, you know, like uh, develop our risk questions, what we would like to know, what we would like to achieve in our study. And then, since bibliometrics is somehow is similar to data uh, data mining, because we have to collect and harvesting the data, it's like a garbage in, garbage out. So if we get so if we really have uh, defined our uh, objective really well, well, we can explain it in the later part. So the planning part is really important. After that, we can choose our database, which database we would use, and also the boundaries and coverage. And we can search, and it includes our searching uh, searching techniques. And advanced, uh, we can use also the advanced tools. And also we can refine the search itself, selection, like skimming, discarding which one is not needed, evaluate the uh, results of the search. And then after that, we can analyze the data using those kind of uh, application and tools that we uh, have uh, discussed before. And then the result representation, we can do the write-up process, uh, interpreting the charts and everything. So let's begin with, uh, Searching the first one after we decided our topics, it's uh, now we have to search. Like I mean, this is the this is my important part. We have to extract the bibliographic, bibliographic data. What are the good search terms? So, for this part, you have to consult with uh, experts like professors. You have to uh, because uh, those are people who know what kind of key. Uh, keywords that we can use for to search or to harvest the data. So we can also consult with subject specialists or reference librarians. We can use thesaurus, dictionary, or use mind mapping tools. And also, um, since uh, bibliometrics is considered as a systematic study, so we have to document all of the steps that we uh, we use, for example, which terms that we, we use for to search, so uh, in these steps, we have to play with systems uh, to get the results and review and improve the search terms. So for determining keywords, um, in if you check my um, if you check my uh, link to the uh, materials, I gave you the all of the worksheet and everything. So um, if you want, you can we can we can uh, also. Uh, Download it like worksheet. So since I know that everyone have really different uh, interests, right? I mean, not all of you have similar interests as mine, but I would like to give you an example. Like um, for example, this is the uh, keywords that I have. So for example, I would, uh, this is the ex uh, example from the book that I got. So for example, glass ceiling. Glass ceiling is like, a, uh, what is it? The uh, limiting, limiting rights in organization in the UK. So the synonym could be firms for organization that are firms, companies, United Kingdoms. So we can implement the keywords for to search the uh, to search the uh, documents that we would like to analyze for bibliometric using bibliometric. So we can also use advanced search. So advanced search is like a uh, we can select which field that we would like to choose. So for example, if you want to uh, analyze in specific journals, we can choose, for example, sources. We can select sources and then uh, type the title of the journal. So we can also implement this uh, advanced search. Maybe I will demonstrate, uh, I will explain first and then we can practice after this. So uh, the search strategies. So 
uh, we can also implement booleans like uh, and or not. So uh, if we have, for example, ha we have two um, terms. So if we want to data, we use and. So this is like a fan, fan diagram. So uh, these are number of papers out there using the terms data and repository. So if we want to use N, we only select the intersection of the fan. So if we use N, it's like only selecting uh, documents that have both terms. If we use OR, it will uh, search uh, all of the papers cons uh, consist of data and then uh, the second term, for example, repository and also data repository. And if we choose not, it's like uh, ex excluding the these uh, the other fans. So, for example, if we choose data, not repositories, the it will the search it will search the documents contains the words of data, but not about repository. We can also the quotation mark. Quotation marks like uh, will yield search uh, both in uh, in the exact word and order. So, for example, uh, institutional repository will yield results only documents that have these two words, uh, but in this specific order. We can also use parentheses. So parentheses is like, a, if we use PEMDAS, it's like, a, it's like a prioritization of the specific words. And we can also use wildcards. So Organi, for example, uh, there are style of writings, right? I mean, we cannot, we cannot really uh, extract author. For example, there are British English and also American English. Uh, with Z or with S, so we can use like um, a quotation, uh, sorry, um, question mark or uh, hashtag. And we can also use uh, the truncation, like for example, repository. There are people, there are authors using uh, a plural, plural or a singular term like repository or repositories. So we can use um, star, star, uh, star, yeah, star logo. And then, uh, we can also filter, refine our search. Like uh, I would like to, for example, if I would like to research uh, limited from 2000 to 2022, I can limit this uh, using filters and also language, publication status, type of papers, sources, databases, or any other things that we uh, would like to filter. So let's get into practice. So <laughs> yeah. So um, this is the good thing about being into uh, institution. So my institution in Florida State University, uh, they use uh, Web of Science, but the Library of Indonesia is using Scopus. So I can, I have, uh, I have access to both of the best four. <laughs> so I can access Scopus at the same time with uh, Web of Science. So to harvest the data, we can actually develop an API. So this is what I'm doing here teaching about how to develop uh, API, so to harvest data, but it will take a semester at least. <laughs> so, but for this uh, demonstration, so for example, if we decided to use, um, to use the search term exploration. So here I, for example, my study is about um, health data repository policy. So this is, for example, this is for the demonstration purpose. So it consists of three concepts, health, data repository, and policy. So health, is there a synonym of health? Well, uh, I know it's related to medicine or medical, could be related to clinical disease, and also data repository, it, it, it is related to database, data warehouse, data registry, and for, for policy, it's all it is related. It has a synonym on rules or guidelines. So we can use like we can implement the search strategies that we discussed before. So for example, or or is useful for synonym. For example, like I want to choose for uh, I would like to search documents related to policy or guidelines. So these are the example on. Uh, implementing the Boolean strategy on our search. So we have to know the, um, uh, the concept, also the terms that we would like to use it for, for searching. And I believe many um, uh, 
we so by using this uh, table, we can explore all of the terms that we can use to search. So uh, we don't miss anything. So we don't miss any because we cannot really control authors using. So for example, uh, there are authors using like I, I said I mentioned earlier. There are authors who are in located in British they, and they use British English. So we cannot really control uh, the others. So what we can do is to explore the search terms that is that are being used by authors. So for example, uh, health research or health data repository policy. And then let's us search. This is Scopus. And these are the results of the, so for example, it uh, resulted in 608 document results. And let's see how it does. So um, the good thing about Scopus is that it searches on uh, the default search is searching through um, title, abstract and key, uh, keywords, sorry. So we can, uh, and by default they use M. And in Word, in Web of Science, we have to do it manually because the uh, the default is topics. So, for example, or and then we choose N for um, title. So to to uh, to have a similar result, we can. You search for abstract title, yeah, that one. You search, oh, not, um, maybe R, yeah, sorry. So sorry, uh, this is the comparison. And after that, uh, since my material is about uh, to how to harvest data, so now we can, select or, or we can apply the filtering. So for example, I want like to uh, limit only for, uh, for years, for example, or I could like to, I could also limit for uh, type of papers. Is it only articles? Because many uh, bibliometric studies uh, are limiting only the articles, but if we want, we can also limit. This is the web of science. And then the similar is basically the, any uh, literature database have similar uh, fil uh, features, right? I mean, we can filter the years, we can filter through subject area, document types and everything. So we can, uh, we can limit the search to specific type of journal. So after that, if we are uh, satisfied with our research, you just click on the, uh, for example, in Scopus, we can export data for further steps. We can export. And this is the important part. If we want to use, um, for example, if we want to use Fosfewer, we have to select uh, which type. So the export would be C CSV or Excel type. And we have to select everything. And to uh, which field that we would like to choose depends, again, it's uh, the planning steps, right? We have to uh, decide which one. If we want to see the funding, we can check. But most of the time, we don't. We don't really need it. But it depends on your objective. So after that, just click export, and it will be downloaded. Uh, Mr. Still Prabhu, program. I'm sorry, okay. you have uh, three minutes again. Yeah. Thank you. And then, yeah, the same thing with. Um, same thing with Web of Science. We can select each page. After that, we can export our data. But in the uh, for Web of Science, usually for the first viewer, we can choose plain uh, text file. Sorry, I have to choose. Um, for the field, we have to choose everything. Like this one, which one we would like to choose. And I uh, have uploaded, again, I we, for uh, the example of Harvest Data, we can, uh, all uh, I put everything in the Google Drive. So you can, you can uh, check. 
after this so we can uh, we can move on to the next uh speaker and also for how to write bibliometrics uh, papers we can also check example papers like we can benchmark to other papers so um yeah i hope i'm sorry that the time limits us uh our session but uh feel free to ask me anything about how to harvest data and um i think that's all right oh yeah so it's about practicing like um, filtering and everything and for data analysis it will be explained further by uh professor ikhwan i think yeah will be next session and how to read graphs and everything so that's all for me thank you so much and i would like to give back the session to uh, moderator mrs lulu Thank you so much, Mr. Prabhu. That was very insightful presentation about bibliometric analysis and data sources. Many important points we can le learn here. Okay, the next session. Uh, we have a senior uh, librarian from University Science Malaysia, Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail. In addition to being a librarian, Mr. Ikhwan was, has also published some articles with interest in the field of research data management, bibliometrics, knowledge management, and information literacy. Today, Mr. Ikhwan will share his knowledge about some softwares that can be used to analyze bibliometric data. And with that, I'm pleased to turn the mic over to Mr. Ikhwan. Please welcome Mr. Ikhwan. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. I want to share my screen first. Yes. Okay. okay can you see my screen? Eh? <clears throat> okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ikhwan Ismail. Uh, you can call me Ikhwan. Uh, I'm senior librarian at the Hamza Sundu Library, University of Science, Malaysia. Uh, thank you very much to Ms. Lulu and also Ms. Maria and also to the organizing co committee for inviting me to this very good international webinar that discuss about the role of bibliometrics in library and information research and services. And also I would like to thanks to my colleagues, uh, Dr. Mazni from UKM, who suggested my name to this uh, webinar has become become one of the uh, speaker for uh, for today. Okay, uh, that um, topic that given to me is an introduction to bibliometric analysis software and visualization tools. Uh, I believe that uh, we we have a, a big picture about the bibliometric that uh, presented by our. Uh, fellow panels uh, today is uh, uh, Bapak Prabhu. Okay, that's a bibliometric, is simple thing that we learned, we heard about uh, the bibliometrics. Bibliometric is, a, is, is we play about the uh, numerical or statistical information, or we can say the quantitative uh, information that we can get, we can obtain from the bibliometric analysis. So because bibliometric is the study of quantity aspect of the production, dissemination, and use of the recorded information. Recorded information, there's a lot of the, if you go to the any databases, for example, Scopus, we have science and so on. So we have um, various or uh, a variety of the materials, okay? We have the books, uh, journal articles, proceedings, review papers, and uh, many other uh, publication that we can get from this uh, databases okay so is that it is also when we look at the uh, bibliometrics it is also have the other related uh, metrics that we can also consider as the uh, we can do the analysis okay because bibliometrics is focused on the uh, academic materials or we can say the uh, for example uh, uh, journals, books, and so on. But we have also the cytometrics, infometrics, webometrics. I believe that uh, many libraries know about the webometrics, uh, especially for those who have roles in the, uh, is take care about the repository and also the library website that give the, uh, provide the information, in the website. So uh, there's also the webometric ranking uh, that we have uh, today. So we can look 
how rich of the content in the website and so on, also the in the repository. And also we have the all metrics that's measure and monitor the uh, what we can say the information, uh, the scholarship information or research materials in the uh, online uh, website, for example, uh, social media, for example, Twitter and so on. So it, there is also, we have the metrics that are available that we can count, we can calculate, we can get the information, we can do the analysis, okay, according to that uh, matrix, okay, that's what we call as the uh, matrix. Okay, uh, many people uh, uh, will ask, it is uh, bibliometrics and also the other review methods, it similar or not, okay. Uh, I, we, we can see here, uh, bibliometrics always uh, sometimes uh, the researcher also like to compare with the systematic literature review and also meta analysis. When we look at the bibliometric analysis, is focused on the uh, uh, inter, uh, we call as the research materials, okay, uh, and also the literature. It could be similar in the meta meta analysis and also systematic literature review, but the difference is about the scope, okay. When we go to the bibliometric analysis, its scope is more broad, okay, is broad. Uh, we can say that uh, a data set, we could be more than maybe hundreds, thousands and so on. But when we go to the systematic literature review, it could be uh, the numbers of the, the, the literature or the academic materials that we want to review, it focus more to the specific numbers. Okay, maybe we want to focus on the specific topics. So we can consider that the number is very, very small because it is too specific. The scope is specific, okay? So um, the, the analysis for the bibliometric analysis, it could be too quantitative and also qualitative. Qualitative in terms of the interpretation, but the, all the unit analysis and so on, it is uh, relied to the, uh, we can say the uh, quantitative, okay? But we go to the systematic literature review. When we compare to the system, systematic literature review, you will go to the quantitative because it's involved uh, in the evaluation and also interpretation because they have sometimes we can build, the, develop the teams, codes and teams, and also the, um, we can say the categories and so on because it can relate to the qualitative. Okay, uh, this is a comparison. Uh, then when we look at the bibliometric analysis, what we can get, uh, we can get the trends of the individual and also the subject fields of the any 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 research any study, and the second one evidence of for the impact. It, when we talk about impact, we always talk about citations. So citation you say citation metric, it can uh, measure the impact of the maybe the individual journal article and also the even the institution and also the countries okay find new and emerging areas of research is very important why many nowadays is a paper in the bibliometric analysis is uh, published in the last three years four years there are a lot of the paper in bibliometric analysis because this bibliometric analysis will help us as a researcher to uh, to find new and also emerging areas of the specific research area. Okay, identify potential research uh, collaborators. We want to look uh, who, uh, uh, which country that uh, discuss about this project and so on. So, so we can also look at the potential of the uh, collaborators, okay, from the bibliometric analysis. And the last one, we can also look at the suitable sources or journal articles, uh, journal titles, uh, maybe the publishers, which publishers that we can uh, produce or, or we can publish our article. Okay, uh, the role of the librarian, uh, when we talk about before we want to go to the bibliometric analysis tool, okay, uh, mostly the librarian, uh, they have two types of the librarian, two types of roles of and purposes of the librarian when they want to do the bibliometric analysis. The first one, that librarian that focus on the research support, okay, that means they want to help you want to go to the researchers' perspective to how they can uh, do the bibliometric analysis. We can provide, the, for example, the information or training or maybe consultation about the how to search and so on. That is all. Don't in at the same time, the librarian should know about the bibliometric analysis to, to support our researchers to uh, to do the bibli bibliometric analysis in terms of to for their maybe their research, their research project or maybe for their publication and the other roles that the library that provide the bibliometric information for the research assessment. For example, in Malaysia, 
that many or uh, each of the university they have one or two libraries or maybe in one division that focus on the bibliometric analysis to provide the information for research assessment at the national level even the international level of, for the national level we call it as the myra so uh, this all these uh, inf bibliometric uh, information that we can get from the uh, bibliometric analysis that we can provide the information from the from the uh, i can say that uh, from the bottom from the individual uh, level then we go to the uh, faculty level and then university level and also national level and even we can go to the international level we can do the we can try to get the what is the most what is the uh, what is the uh, comparison what is the differences and what is the similarities and so on okay so all this kind of the information we can get from the bibliometric analysis okay then uh when we want to do the process it could be uh, uh also Pak Prabu also uh, explain about the process. Uh, we must have the research objective. We want to know what is the research question and so on. Research design. This is what we must focus on. Okay, what are the design that we want to do? For example, uh, we want to uh, use the bibliometric and uh, visualization only, or we want to combine the uh, bibliometric and also the content analysis. And that is what we must to decide before we want to do the uh, bibliometric analysis. And then we want to focus the bibliometric data. So we want to focus why it is based on the journal, only for the article, only for the author only, or about the keyword only, or maybe we can, can combine together in one project uh, article, which database corpus we outside, how about the filtering, how about inclusion and also exclusion, we, what we want to exclude, what we want to include. Okay, and then we go to the metadata, uh, sorry, methodology and software, what is the bibliometric approach we want to use? Citation, co-citation, co-authorship, co-occurrence, and so on. And what tools that we want to use? We want to use the Excel only, or we want to use the Excel and then reverse viewer. And we want to also use the Hazim publish on page and so on. Again, then the analysis and result. We want to what we want, what what the expectation, uh, what what actually do you want to find? Uh, the most cited article is top five or top ten or top 20 so all this must be considered when you want to do the bibliometric analysis this is a process the five steps that you must decide before you want to do the bibliometric analysis actually this is a process of the bibliometric analysis okay uh for the techniques of the bibliometric analysis we can go to the basic one and also the advanced one the basic information i can say that bibliometric bibliometric information basic bibliometric information we can obtain directly from the citation index database or any databases that provide the information about the bibliometric data okay for example authorship origin source contents and also the citations okay but when you go to the advanced bibliometric and uh, information okay that you must use the bibliometric software to get more result more details the result because some of the databases cannot uh, they cannot provide the the information that for example uh, core occurrence uh, core authorship uh, core citation uh, for example but we must use the software and tools to develop or to uh, uh, to analyze this bibliometric uh, information in advanced way okay in advanced technique okay all right so this uh, you you can refer from this uh, don't to article also they they provide that information is very yeah, this diagram is a bibliometric analysis they have also the main technique and so also enrichment technique okay so this is a main technique uh, they focus on the performance analysis and also the science mapping. And when we look at the performance analysis, actually, when we want to decide which which element, which metric that we want to focus, they can also can be divided by three. Okay, the first one is a publication related uh, metrics. I mean, they focus only about the publication. Okay, for example, total of publication, number of co contributing authors for publication that we 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 search in the, in that database. Okay. Uh, uh, is it any sole authored the publications called who are the code co-author publications okay and also we can focus on the only the citation okay citations related metric how about this total citations average citation every citation of cited uh, sorry every citation per publication or every citation per cited publications okay all these things you can do the bibliometric analysis and also you can also can combine can also analyze with the citation and publication related metric. For example, that we have 
collaboration index, okay, number of cited publications, uh, citation per cited publication that as mentioned just now, and also H index, G index, because they have also information about the citation and also the publication, all right? So uh, this is, uh, I can say the, we must use the uh, tools or software in the sign mapping, okay, sign mapping and also the network analysis. In the sign mapping, for example, we want to look at the relationship among the publications, among the authors. We want to look at the most influential uh, publication, for example. So we must use the tools, for example, because they have uh, visualized uh, in our network, okay, they will show the link strength and also the notes that are available, uh, the big note and small note. They, they can uh, show us about the the uh, uh, the the result, for example, uh, which one is the most, which are the recent, and so on. Okay, they have also core citation analysis, bibliographic coupling, uh, core analysis, and so on. Okay, this is an example of the bibliometric uh, visualization software that uh, are Big Excel, uh, Voice Viewer, and so on. And also, very important nowadays, many of the pap uh, paper public. Um, uh, bibliometric analysis paper actually that discuss about the clustering. Okay, uh, is it is it very good because we want to know, for example, in the one thousand uh, papers, uh, we can develop how many clusters. Okay, that that clusters is re represent in uh, which uh, specific area and so on. Okay, so we can get from this uh, bibliographic management, uh, bibli sorry, bibliometric uh, analysis software and tools. Okay. That as mentioned before, that basic information, we can strictly actually information we can get from the citation index database. For example, Scopus, Web of Science, Google Scholar, and Dimensions. This one, these four uh, examples of the databases that we can get the information, uh, for example, about the publication uh, and also the citation. It's focused in the, for the authors, uh, uh, journal articles, and also the uh, conference uh, papers, proceeding, and so on. Okay, uh, but when we go to the Skyval, okay, the Skyval, Skyval, and also the Insight is focused to get the bibliometric information uh, uh, regarding to the, for example, the at the faculty level, national uh, institution level, and also the national level, and also international level. Okay, so we can do the comparison and also the similarities from this uh, website. Then we can certainly get the information from this. Uh, particular databases and also we have the JCR okay they say provide the information bibliometric information about the journal itself the journal performance the journal's uh, reputation we can get the uh, bibliometric information from the journal citation report JCR for way of science okay all right so uh, this software uh, next is the software that we can use that also have been mentioned uh, with the Pak Prabhu uh, we can use the Excel uh, set space net draw was we were are and also publish operation okay my experiences uh, i always uh, familiar with these three tools excel was we were and also publish operation okay all right okay um for the we can also it is like quite similar with the the process of the flow with the snr that we want we must focus uh, we can use this like protocol or uh, we can use this uh, diagram to to, to get the general uh, idea to use how, how we want to do the bibliometric analysis, okay? We can start from the topic. We can focus what scope that we want, for, for example, which database, okay? Uh, which is, uh, which uh, uh, search field that we want to focus? Is it uh, any, uh, maybe the advanced uh, search and so on? And time frame, okay? What year, maybe 10 years, on, only between uh, range, between uh, maybe the uh, 20 years, 30 years, is it, is up to you. Uh, refer to your research objective and research questions. Uh, the language, uh, what is the source type, journal, and also document type, article, or review, and so on. Okay, uh, this is your search string. Okay, maybe in the Scopus, it could be different search string with the way of science. Uh, your data accepted and also your recorded, identified, and screen. If you have the inclusion, exclusion, you maybe you can remove some of the articles and you can have the final one, the last number, the, the final number of the documents that you want to do the bibliometric analysis. Okay, all right. So these are from Scopus. You can uh, search by uh, by affiliation. For example, if you want to study about the, you want to analyze the information document in the, uh, uh, for the purpose of the, for example, you want to search 
uh, publication uh, for the one university, you can search by affiliation, then you can get the numbers here. All right. And then you uh, strictly in the scopus, they can also provide the information, bibliometric information, and also they can, they can rank, they can sort by, for example, uh, which one is the most uh, uh, general titles that has been published, okay, in the, uh, in the scopus, okay, for your institution, for example, for uh, for USM, and also what what are the subject area? They can also provide the uh, pie chart here like this. They can also present to you the number and also the percentage. So easy to us to get the, all these information straightly from the uh, from the scopus. Okay, without we do the further and uh, we I can say that we can uh, without we bring that data metadata bibliographic data to the the uh, to the Excel, for example, then we run the analysis. Okay, but but the basic thing actually, Scopus and also the website also they provide the information. Okay, for us we can certainly get the information. For example, like this. Okay, we have here about the uh, easy vanity reports and also visualiz visualization formats. We have the uh, we can also select the range of publication years. Okay, we can have have also here this one uh, by by journal title by source by uh, document by author, which authors are most uh, published in the Scopus for this university, uh, document by affiliation. We can look at the collaborators here and also the, uh, um, the collaborators and also the countries and also documents type, subject area and many more you can get from strictly from the Scopus. And also we can look at the citation metric in the Scopus, okay? We can look at the citation, for example, that paper, if one paper published in the any papers that published in 2020. So we can look how many citations that have been uh, uh, had been received for this uh, this publication in 2020. Uh, we can look by by each year. Okay. For example, here you can go uh, for each year. Okay. For example, they have uh, many. Uh, I can say for each citation by by each year they will present you here. Okay. So you can get the overview for the citation metric uh, for any that you want to look at, okay? Uh, you can also the expand your analysis. You can do the further analysis by export to Excel, okay? You can also export through the CSV, BibTeX, RIS, okay? You can also uh, use the plain text, okay? But mostly we can uh, export through the format CSV and also RIS format. Uh, if the large number of the documents, they will email you, they will give the the uh, you must take your email and then you put the range uh range range here and then they will give you email and then you can download that link that given uh, in uh, through email you can download that excel okay then you can do the further analysis okay they give you bibli they, you can uh, request the ex, uh, the excel you can export the excel okay about the bibliographic data okay that mean the metadata is about authors author id title year uh, source title, original title, volume, issue number, and so on. Okay, all the information they will give you. Okay, and also you can look at the citation metric. Okay, so all the citation metric they will show you here. Okay, in the Excel, for example. Okay, okay, this is a way of science. Okay, way of science also, you can also analyze your result by, for example, by research area. You can look here. Okay by uh, publication, by uh, is it open access or not open access, okay, about the document types, okay, database, uh, databases is under uh, way of science. So all these kind of the bibliometric data will, uh, we will get in there strictly from the way of science and also they will can give you, uh, they, they will provide you, they will present with the uh, many kind, uh, many type of the uh, visualization uh, uh, view, for example, this a uh, bar chart, okay. This one the bar chart, and also they have also a tree map chart, okay. So this one you can download and then you can straight for you can present to your management or you can present in the in your in your draft paper, okay. And also you can also look at the bibliographic data similar with the Scopus. You can export with CSV uh, bibliographic data and also citation metric. Okay, these are tools that I mentioned you uh, just now. This is about tool that you want to have more details or you want to get the advanced uh, bibliometric metric, uh, bibliometric uh, analysis. You can use Excel, uh, Voice Viewer, or Publish Publish, or Site Space, or NetDraw. Okay, uh, this is the Excel. Okay, Excel is a simple 
you can do the basic one then you can actually you can do many things actually from the c uh, from the excel okay when you have you download when we uh, import the uh, the format csv for example from the scopus or web of science we can manipulate data we can analyze data from this we call as the microsoft excel and you can use, uh, I love to use the pivot table both for bibliometric data analysis. We can do many things. We can range, we can get the top 10 or more cited, more, most influential uh, publication, uh, most uh, cited authors and so on. We can just use pivot table. At the same time, we can also develop the pivot graph, okay, from the Excel. You can do many things actually. Okay, so uh, please try to learn about the pivot table. It's very good uh, software. Actually, we can do many things from this, all the data we can get from the uh, Scopus and Way of Science. And also because the bibliometric also, they have the formula. Uh, we, we are familiar with the formula in the Excel. So we can also uh, formulate and we can also uh, develop. Uh, for example, we have the total citation. See, automatically, uh, Microsoft Excel will, will calculate. If we have the formula, we can uh, get the uh, cited per publication, cited per, uh, cite, cite, cited per cited publication, and also cited per publication, uh, for example, like that. Okay, so uh, the percentage and also use just formula in this uh, Excel, you can get many uh, and, uh, result from this bibliometric analysis. And also we can use the geographical, ge geographical data in term, in term for the countries and also the continents. We just put the information here. So automatic uh, micro Excel will develop this map and we can get the number and also the colors from the uh, Excel. It's very powerful. Uh, uh, tools actually, okay. And also we go to the voice viewer. The voice viewer is one of the popular bibliometric and also visualization tools, okay, for bibliometric analysis. Uh, this can um, uh, can look at the networks, okay, between the journals, re researchers, even individual publications that can be constructed based on the citation, bibliographic coupling, co-citation and co-authorship relationship. Uh, sorry, uh, cause co authorship relations. Okay, so they have um, uh, free software. It is open source software. No need to pay anything. You just go to the viewers viewer. You can click here. I provide this link here. You just click here, and then you can get the free software. Okay, don't uh, I mean, I do not think uh, no need to to pay anything lah. Okay, because it is open source software. Uh, this interface. Okay, you can choose type of data. You when you download the any uh, data from the Scopus or from website, for example, you can download uh, RIS or .csv. We you, we can use this. What we can manipulate the data. Okay, for uh, for bibliometric analysis. Okay, you can uh, you can do the analysis, but uh, for the co-authorship, co-occurrence, citation bibliographic coupling and also cost citations okay so this is a unit analysis you can choose anything and then you can also decide to choose the this whole okay so you want to for example minimum number of document of water one or two or three you decide that anything that you did uh, for the uh, bibliometric analysis you must uh, you must mention in the method actually, okay? Because you uh, you must uh, tell the audience, tell the reader, okay, you are choosing threshold is the minimum number of documents, uh, for example, two authors, okay? Minimum number of the citation for of an author is about 10, minimum is 10, okay? So all this you must mention. And then after you click on the finish here, you will, sh you will get, for example, the visualization of the uh, network, okay, uh, from that, uh, choose choosing of the type of analysis and unit of analysis. Okay, so they have notes here, notes that we can we can look here at the circle circle with the different colors and also the the link the line here. They they will represent about the the close of the notes there is about the close relationship and also the notes bigger and so on because the strength of that uh, notes. Okay, all right. Next, uh, is about this example of co-occurrence uh, for all keywords. Okay, you can see here they have. You can also develop the co keyword co-occurrence network. Okay, we can if you find that um, they have about three colors here, uh, red, blue, and uh, sorry, red, blue, and green. So that means they have three clusters here. So we can uh, describe uh, what cluster is 
for each uh, cluster that develop in this network. Uh, these are uh, keywords uh, called occurrence network by uh, uh, clusters. And also you can look at the keyword called occurrence network by year of publications. Okay, so for example here, okay, so they have an uh, indicator here from 2013 to 2017. So the yellow color, we can look which cluster or which nodes that uh, they show the recent uh, year of publication, for example, 2006 and 2007, we can look at the uh, green color and also the yellow color. So the notes of the, for example, at the blue color maybe is a, is a 2013 and 14. So we can do the explanation and describe about that, okay? All right, next, uh, is it citation or country? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you have three minutes again. Okay, all right. Okay, then uh, we have, uh, there's a voice viewer. We can do the visualization uh, network, okay, for the bibliometric analysis. Okay, the last one I want to show you about the publish, has in published or perish. It's, this is a software program that retrieve and analyze academic citation. It is focused more to the citation. They, they can present a range of the citation metrics, okay, including the number of papers, okay, total citation and also the aging that, okay. This, I also provide the links. It is also the open source software. It is free, no need to pay anything, okay? All right? Okay, uh, this uh, as in op publish open after you install this software, you can get several uh, databases that are available here. You can straightly download the articles, uh, download the document, or I can say the import the document, to this housing publish or perish. Uh, there's Crossref, Google Scholar, uh, Web of Science, Corpus, Metis Scholar, and also PubMed. Or you can also uh, accept the data, import the data uh, using the, for example, the format RIS, okay? All right? For example, you go to the Scopus and then you uh, export to RIS, okay? RIS format, and then you import external data, RIS format, for example, Scopus.RIS, then they will show you this all the information bibliographic data information and also uh, you can see the citation also uh, has been included in this housing uh, publish or paris and at the same time you can also look at the citation metric on your right hand side okay they mention about the the publication year citation years papers citation sites per year sites per public uh, paper authors paper issue in that and so on you can uh, analyze uh, from the individual document or individual author and also individual uh, until at the uh, uh, institutional, institutional level, okay? All right, uh, for example, you can also, you can copy and save result, okay? If you want to present in the slide or in your Microsoft Word and so on. And also you can look at the uh, individual, for example, you can look at the Google Scholar profile and you can see how many uh, this, the citation and also the publication that uh, this individual have in uh, that available in the from the Google Scholar. Okay, so you can go to the H index and also G index. All right, uh, I think thank you uh, very much for my presentation. I would like to uh, give the emphasis to my library, University of Science Malaysia, and also my supervisors from UM, and also for those who teach me about the bibliometric from Dr. Zarina, uh, Dr. ID, and all my collaborators for the bibliometric analysis project. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Lulu. I hope if you have any question, you can ask uh, uh, after this, okay? All right, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Iwan. Um, uh, this is a very insightful uh, presentation. And now, uh, uh, I uh, hope we have, uh, we can use it yeah, in Indonesia and also the uh, Now, uh, we have, uh, I'm sorry. Now we have uh, Mr. Jesse uh, and Ms. Tina Yang uh, for the next uh, speaker. Mr. Jesse, uh, the head of scholarly communication and research services at the University of Hong Kong Library. Before being a librarian, he had an experience in database architecture in Oxford University Press. And Ms. Tina is uh, Mr. J.C. Supervisor. She is the Associate Librarian of Learning and Research Services at the University of Hong Kong Library. She oversees a team of 
librarians that support the various stages of teaching, learning, and research process. Today, they will tell us more about media metrics and research impact that exist in the University of Hong Kong Libraries. Now, please welcome Mr. Tracy Xiao and Ms. Sinayan. Great. Hello, everyone. So, perhaps Tina share screen first. Okay, good good morning, everyone. Um, thanks, Miss Lulu, for your uh, kind introduction, and also thanks um, thank University of Indonesia for organizing this webinar and inviting Jason and I to share our experience at University of Hong Kong Libraries. Um, so um, we will focus on uh, bibliometrics and research impact services in Hong Kong U libraries. First of all, I will uh, give you an introduction or, or some background about um, our university and the library research services. So University of Hong Kong was founded in 1911. It is the oldest university uh, library in Hong Kong. Uh, this year, we are celebrating 111th anniversary. So currently we have 10 faculties, over 33,000 students and over 8,000 staff. And the university was ranked uh, 21 in 2023 QS University ranking and 30 in the 2020 Times Higher Education World Univers University Ranking. So this, can, this table gives you um, an overview of our research profile during 2020 to 2021. Our um, disciplines are grouped into um, four broad discipline areas. And you can see um, the research outputs and number of research projects and also the research funding in different um, disciplinary area. And also the total number of research outputs and um, excuse me, uh, research projects and also the funding. So, uh, our university is a um, research intensive university. This is the university library, uh, which consists of the main library and six branch libraries. As you can see, we have the main library, the Feng Pingshan Library. Feng Pingshan Library is our East Asian collection. Then the medical and dental library and law library, education library, and music library. So the libraries, most of the libraries are situated on the main campus and also um, the Centennial campus, and except medical and dental libraries are off campus. If you wish to know more about our libraries, you may explore these virtual tours. And the li this is a library's vision, that is to uh, support the teaching, learning, research, and knowledge exchange with our resources, people-centered services, and also the innovative and collaborative approaches. Mm -hmm. So the library services are developed in line with the uh, library's vision. Uh, you can see this is a landscape of our current research services, including different aspects. And here are some highlights on our um, services. For example, we provide um, Turnitin, which is a similarity check um, software uh, to detect uh, plagiarism, and uh, also NO is a citation management software. We have a site license to support uh, 
citation management and uh, research integrity. And for the bibliometric and impact services, um, we have been doing Hong Kong Youth Scholars in top 1% projects for many years. So every year, a list of um, top 1% Hong Kong Youth Scholars um, was, uh, is verified and published in our uh, university's publication first and foremost. And also we provide citation certification service um, to support grant and award application and uh, publication verification service to support job and grant application. And these services are fee-based, which is open, which are open to the uh, academic staff and postgraduate students. We have been also providing different um, bibliometric and impact reports upon requests uh, from the departments and senior management teams and uh, some other um, units such as knowledge ex exchange units office um, in the university. So um, this is the institutional repository and the, uh, which is administered and the university library. And this is the data repository um, also administered by the university library. Uh, in the university, we have um, a research data and records management policy, which requires um, RPG students to deposit to submit their data management plan and deposit their research data into the data repository before they can uh, graduate. Um, also, the uh, researchers with external grants are required to submit DMP and also develop, uh, deposit their data in our um, data repository. So, um, for the details on the research services, I think JC will, um, will elaborate more. So let me pass the mic to JC. Okay, so um, thanks Tina. So probably I can share the screen. So, so Tina, can you stop sharing? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to stop sharing, but I can only see the icon post share. Uh, can you see my screen? So can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, Mr. Jesse, clear. Yes, Mr. Jesse, clear. Okay, thank you. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, thanks for uh, providing providing this opportunity to let us present our research services. So uh, as Tina uh, uh, introduced, so we have a list of services in our research services team, and I would like to emphasize the PPO metric and the research impact services. So, uh, so before we talk about the uh, BPO, uh, research uh, research metric and the BPO metric, so we just know uh, what is uh, research metric. So the metric is a policy for productivity and the performance. So it generate. Uh, from the publication, and a lot of these changes arise because uh, you should know different disciplines have their own kind of publication practice. So and the publication type may matter in some, but not others. So such as uh, engineering has more general articles and the computer science more um, conference proceedings and some uh, discipline, as you know, in the humanity, uh, for instance, so they are not have any, uh, no, probably they don't have too many uh, traditional uh, research outputs. So uh, as a result, so uh, some metrics so may not be uh, relevant. So which we have to be quite careful when we use the research metric. And we should use different metrics together as this graph display. So we should use, use different metrics together as the basket of the measures. So that can provide a bolder picture 
learn any single uh, measurements. So I think it is important to say that the measure should never use in the isolation. And there are, you know, uh, other performance parameters measurable and not unmeasurable. So that may be equally ignored. So they are more important that let them kind of metrics. So for responsible use of research metrics, so they have some uh, initiative uh, at least here. So such as later manifestual dollar, et cetera. So they have been developed over the years to advocate the responsible use of research metrics. So it is important that the researchers and the research administrators uh, that do plan to use metric should have a good understanding of them. So, uh, so, and I would like to emphasize that the research metric is not equal to uh, the research evalu evaluation. So the research evaluation may include the formal and the uh, formal and the informal uh, formal and the informal evidence frameworks, methods and tools, narrative evidence on uh, social impact and the evidence of influence, reputations, behaviors, etc. But research metrics may include the cytometric, bibliometric, or automatic indicator for the ranking base of. So, um, uh, so that means that not all evaluations use research metric and not all metrics are useful for research evaluation. Okay, so we use some uh, famous citation checking database in our research and uh, in our bibliometric and research impact services, so such as the Web of Science Scopus, so which index different collections defined by the publication the commercial enterprise holds. So there are some uh, disadvantage for those two databases as it cannot cover all publications in the world. So such as a lot of Chinese journals are not in their collection. And uh, also a lot of publication type are not in those uh, database collection. So the, limit, the limited coverage is reflected in, in the research analytical tools such as Cyro and Insight as they are draw on the data from low citation tracking database to provide the uh, analysis result. But we uh, should all should know the low, some ranking organizations. So they are using low database to get the research performance data. Uh, for example, QS, QS University ranking. So it used the uh, school bus database, uh, but only, only use the least, type, least of publication type here such as article, review, conference, paper, book, book, chapter, article in press, and the business article, et cetera. So for our university research administrator and the senior uh, management, so as they, uh, so as they know, they have, we, we have many databases provide different metrics for the publication, researchers, and the university ranking, but how could we extra those information to compile with, uh, with each one? So they, are, they may feel confused because they have so many data sources. So, and then our library developed the Scholars Intelligence Hub, which is the platform to collect the different metrics from different stores. So you will see, uh, we will collect the bibliometric and, and, any, and any research metric data from a different kind of platform, such as a school pass, Cyro, and Dimensions, PSI, Web of Science, et cetera. So we will collect uh, those data from a different external database. And then we will also integrate with our, with our internal database. So we will integrate with our uh, internal uh, uh, institutional repository, Scholars Hub, with some personal data from uh, our HR system. Then our libraries and a colleague will uh, do some manually clean the data. And after that, we will visualize data using the Power BI to generate the report on the Power BI platform. And after that, the uh, research administrator or the senior manager, uh, senior management uh, staff can very easily to see the real time updated metric data in the scholars intelligence hub. So, okay, so there are some uh, key metrics we will use in the Scholars Intelligence Hub, such as um, publication count, citation count, et cetera. So I think uh, most of metrics you are very uh, familiar with, such as H index citation count, but uh, well, I would like to uh, emphasize some uh, two, uh, two metrics, such as the citation percentile and uh, FWCF. 
And actually CNCI is the uh, same, same as FWCI, but it's provided by different company. So the FWCI is provided by the SRVR and the CNCI is provided by the Caribbean. Okay, so, so why we use the FWCI and the CSCI, which means the file weighted citation impact. So instead of just using the citation count, so for the citation council, it is a simplest metric for article is like the number of citation which have received. So, but it, but it have some uh, uh, significant uh, difficulty to use because a different academic field may have widely different average of level of citation. For example, for same citation count article in the molecular biology and the history. So probably the history uh, article get uh, get higher impact uh, than the, the articles in the molecular biology. So let me use the very uh, simple example here to uh, to teach you how to uh, calculate the FWCI and the CNCI. So for example, a uh, total uh, if we get the total uh, thirty one thousand articles in a field of cell biology, so which is classified by the Scopus database. So in the 2018, so at the time of writing, so they are received a total like 400 by 451,000 citations. So and then the uh, average citation per article is the uh, is equal to uh, total citation divided by the total article, which is along the 40. So after that, if one one cell biology article in 2018 has received the 29 citation. So therefore the FWCI for this publication is 29 divided by um, 40.4, which is 2.201. So we use the same algorithm to calculate the one, um, one uh, articles from the history field. So which also received the uh, 29 citation. So when we calculate that, you will see uh, for same citations article in the history field and the cell biology field. So the FWCI is quite different. So the history field FWCI will be the 80.455, so which is much higher than the cell biology. So another, another, another metric we will use is the citation percentile. So which is also very easy to calculate. So if we have uh, like, again, we use the cell biology as the example. If we have uh, the 30, 31,000 article published in the 2018 in the field of cell biology. So we will rank in the uh, citation count. So for example, the most cited article received the 2,000 and uh, uh, 2,468 citation down to the least cited article, which, which should receive zero citation. So the number of citations received by an article at the positions uh, 313 in, the, in this list. So therefore, they should be the, in the top 1% most citation percentile. So we, should, so we can use the same algorithm to calculate the top 10 most cited, most cited percentile article, et cetera. Okay, so after that, so we, when we go to the uh, several database as I, as I introduced before, so we, we use the several database in our scholars in PHS hub. So the several database can provide the researcher profile um, uh, information such as the number of, number of scholarly output, the researchers FWCI value, citation count, citation per publication, H index, H5 index, et cetera. And also, and also it can provide, uh, you, you, can, you can easily find what the researcher may be good at. So you can see the researcher's top, researcher, researcher publication and by the topic. And also you will see the FWCI for the publications in this topic. And here we will also use the prominence percentile here. So the prominence, the prominence, prominence percentile is the indicator that count by the publication, citations, view, and the general site score together. So if the prominence percentile is more close to the uh, 100, so that means the research project in this topic may receive more funding and get the higher citations in future. Okay, so 
so we so when we do some uh, compare different uh, researchers, so we will also compare with the researchers topic. So you will see uh, as this example, so the candidate A and the candidate B in our comparison. So the candidate A may have uh, their research output are in the different research topic. So probably they are more bolder than the candidate B. So which is the candidate B is only focused on the computer science and the candidate A is, uh, also have some publication in the medical and the biomedical science. Okay, so our bibliometrics also involve in the uh, university ranking analysis. So uh, as you may know, so the uh, so from this week, so you will see the subject ranking divided to the four parts here, four parts here. So the so they have the academic ac academic reputation, so employee employee reputation, uh, citation per publication, and the H index. So we will have the four part of uh, uh, metric, uh, four part of uh, score to calculate the uh, QA subject ranking. So uh, you will see the different subject we have the different proportions. So for example, probably uh, life science. So the uh, citation per per paper and the H and the H index may may take the larger proportions. So when we do some uh, subject ranking analysis, for example, I use the nursing and uh, life science and medicine in the QS. So we will see in the nursing, so uh, actually the citation, the H index, uh, they are along the 60% um, uh, proportions in the QS subject ranking. So we can further analysis uh, why uh, our university uh, in this uh, in the nursing subject ranking. Uh, so for example, this one is this slide in the life science uh, ranking. So you so we will get the information such as citations, H index for low score, and then we can based on the score to further analysis why we get the high score and why we get the low score. So this example, this slide is for the nursing. And before we analyze it, so we should know what is the uh, H, uh, what is the H index. So the H index is defined the uh, maximum value of H, such as given the author journal has has published at, at least H papers that have been each been cited at least at least H times. So the citation per publication is not equal to the H index. So after that, so we will collect all the Hong Kong U publication in the nursing subject and in the life science and the medicine subject from school pass and then we can analysis the H index in the nursing and the H index in the uh, life science. So we can get that the, uh, our publication in nursing, uh, in nursing H index is, uh, 30, say is 39 and the citation per publication is 11.91. And also can calculate the life science in medicine. So we can also compare with our, uh, our uh, 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 compare with other top universities. So such as we can compare with the uh, National University of Singapore, and also we compare with the uh, Pink Soviet University to analyze why uh, 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 what kind of uh, score we are uh, relatively low. So when we compare when we compare with other uh, other peers, so we find our actually our H index is lower than others. Okay, so I will quickly introduce our uh, scholars uh, intelligence hub uh, because I think the time is uh, limited. So, uh, so for our scholars intelligence hub too, you can see the several report in our platform. So, for example, in the first report, you will see the uh, overall research performance. So here you can uh, change different uh, labels. So you can use the university level, faculty level, or department level. And after that, you, can, you will see the uh, general information about the scholarly output, researcher number, uh, FWCI, citation per publication. And also we have some uh, metrics from uh, web science, such as the number of highly cited paper, number of hot paper, et cetera. And here you will see the publication and the citation trend here and also the overall citation percentile information here. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your remind. Yeah. And uh, another and uh, and uh, and another report is we will uh, map the publication to different uh, subject schema. So as you know, we have uh, as you know, different database may have different subject schema, such as school pass. So they have the ASJC subject schema, QS faculty, QS subject, and the THE. And also we have the web science schema, ESI schema. So we will map those publication to different schema. And then the uh, and then we can easily see the publication distribution in different subjects. And also we will see the FWCI value in the different subject and also uh, the publication count in the different FWCI range. And from this graph, you will see, so we have around like 20% uh, of 20% of a publication uh, in the FWCI range one between one and the two. Okay. So, and, uh, and the this report shows the citation percentile and the collaborations and uh, uh, in the given period of years. So for example, here you will see the overall citation percentile median is uh, uh, is seventy uh, is seventy one, and also you will see that each year citation percentile if you uh, mouse over to the uh, the yearly line, and then you will see the each year citation percentile media value. And from this graph, you will see you will uh, easily find what is the best uh, collaboration uh, institutions based on the. Uh, citation percentile, uh, uh, number of paper in the citation percentile uh, distributions. Okay, so for the last report is about the researchers over, overview. So this uh, scatter diagram will display all the faculty and the department staff in the scatter plot. And here we have four, uh, uh, four sessions. Uh, divided by the average line for the publication count and the average line for the uh, FWCI. So for this top right corner here, so uh, it means the research if if researcher in this area, so which means they they, they publication count and the FWCI value is above average. So we want to see some researchers in this area first. Okay. So as time is not enough for finish my uh, finish my um, presentation, so probably uh, so I will release my slide to the uh, uh, to you guys, and if you have any question, feel free to ask. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all for my presentations. Okay, thank you very much. That was a very inspiring presentation from Ms. Tina and Mr. Jesse Sal. Hopefully we can apply it. Hopefully we can apply it to some aspects in our library services and management. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, okay, so now we will move to the last speaker from the University of Melbourne, Ms. Sarah Shering and Ms. Francis Nau. Bishara is a liaison librarian with support at the architecture building planning, li planning library at the University of Melbourne. She has been working in research support for over 10 years. And Ms. Francy is a liaison librarian for research support in the education library team for the Melbourne Graduate Research of Education at the University of Melbourne. She has a career in research support space over the last 12 years. They will be talking about librarians' career prospects as bibliometric analyze and the role of bibliometrics in academic library. Now, please welcome Ms. Sarah Shering and Ms. Francie Naut. Thank you very much, Ms. Luluk, and thank you to all the previous speakers. This has been fascinating to listen to. Um, Francie's going to share our slides. So we're going to talk about um, really our experience in building a career in bibliometric analysis today. Uh, but first of all, um, 
As is customary in Australia, we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we are presenting from, the Wurundjeri and Boon people of the Kulin Nations and their elders past and present, who are creating and sharing knowledge as part of the longest continuing culture in the world. We'd like to welcome all Indigenous and First Nation people here today. So a little bit about us, um, Miss Lilk's already read some of our information um, out, but we've both been working with research support for quite a long time. Um, both of us since it kind of started at the University of Melbourne in around 2011. Um, I've been in my current role since 2015, um, but I've been working at the University of Melbourne for quite a long time, since 2002. And Francie, would you like to tell everyone about you? Yes, and um, for about the same time, I was working uh, with the faculty, the, Mal the Melbourne Graduate School of Education, um, since 2012 in a bibliometrics role, and then in 2015, we expanded it to other research support roles. Um, back to you, Sarah. Okay, so we thought maybe we could find out a little bit about you, the audience. Um, everyone's been very patient in listening a lot so we thought maybe um, you could tell us a little bit about yourselves we have a poll here I've just put the link in the chat um, it's all completely anonymous so we'd just like to know a little bit about the audience and Francie will share the results of the poll so we can just see where we all are in terms of our our roles um, are we professional library staff are we academics um, are we librarians so on so if you'd like to um, go to the link and click great. We've got lots of people responding. Fantastic. It's lovely to see the mix of people in the audience. Um, that's really insightful for us. Um, so thank you for voting or putting your poll in. You can see we have lots of experienced librarians as well. Lots of people uh, that shares our identity with us. So fantastic yes. to see that. So we'll perhaps give it a couple of minutes if you'd like to share uh, in, in the poll. Um, and then uh, we will move on um, just to, I'll let it settle for a bit. And um, So yes, it's shifting a little bit, but uh, yeah, we were expecting quite a mix of people and welcome wherever you're coming from. And hopefully you will get um, a, a new sort of window into how we work in Australia and at the university from our presentation. Um, so I can see that we're still voting, but uh, maybe you could just indicate if you still wanted to have a go in the chat. And if not, we can uh, move on to the next part of our session. Thank you, everyone. I think we can. Thank you, um, everyone. It's really interesting to see we have almost an even split between librarians who are just starting in their careers and um, librarians with lots of experience. So that's really interesting for us to know. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so just a, a brief overview of what we will be talking about. So we'll have a quick look at the Australian context, what's happening um, in academic research in Australia. Then we will tell you about the University of Melbourne experience. Then we have a recording we made uh, with a bibliometric analyst colleague of ours, Eleanor Collar, who hasn't been a librarian for as long as Francie and I, and she's had a very um, different career trajectory 
to us. Then we will look at why librarians should work with bibliometrics. And we have quite a lot of resources that you can have a look at after the session about um, how to build bibliometric skills that Francie put together. So the Australian context. Um, the librarian's involvement in bibliometrics in Australia is linked to the Australian Research Council's uh, Excellence in Research for Australia program. Uh, the first round of that program, which basically assesses the research outputs of all of the universities in Australia, happened in 2010. Um, and there were further rounds in 2012, 2015 and 2018. And citation analysis that all of the previous speakers have shown you the very complex ways that that can be done. Um, that was identified as one of the indicators of research quality. And in the first two rounds, Scopus was the main database that was used to um, get the data from that. Um, and because researchers still don't have the time and they didn't have the time or the capability to collect the metrics independently, um, across the board, libraries decided to support them. And the traditional services that we offered got expanded to include the provision of bibliometric services. So there were some surveys um, conducted in 2015 as a part of a study. And um, of 38 of the 39 Australian university libraries. And that showed that by that time, um, so from between 2010 and 2015, um, no library had fewer than two to five staff working with bibliometrics. 14 of the 39 libraries surveyed had six to 10 staff working with bibliometrics and four had more than 15 staff. So it was um, a pretty quick growth and a big growth of um, bibliometric services. Um, so over time, the way we have dealt with uh, metrics has changed. Um, there's been an increased focus on metrics for grant and promotion applications. And also um, the Australia Research Council kind of changed the way they looked at um, the research output. So, in 2017, they moved to also including an engagement and impact assessment. They piloted it in 2017, then ran their first assessment. And what that looked like was that they looked at um, engagement, which was the interaction between researchers and the end users of that research outside of academia um, to transfer the knowledge, technologies, methods and resources. And then they looked at impact, which was the contribution that the research made to the economy, to society, to the environment or culture beyond academic research. So we've started to move away from just looking at the citation metrics and looking at more of a, a way that um, research contributes to improving the health and well-being and prosperity of individuals and the broader community. So. In that um, atmosphere, the Excellence in Research Australia was reviewed in 2019 and 2020, and we are moving much more towards um, having a whole story and a narrative around the, the um, research impact. So the metrics are only just one part of um, the, the story now. And then I think Francie's going to tell you next about... Um, bibliometrics at the University of Melbourne, which has kind of reflected these changes that I've just been talking about. Yes, and then uh, the University of Melbourne Library um, came and developed a research evaluation and metric service that started late in 2011. Uh, the, uh, we then formed an operational group and the operational group is called Rylus and that was convened the first time in September 2012. Both uh, Sarah and I was at that meeting. Uh, that was created to coordinate the research impact in a citation report service. And then how that worked is because we have 10 faculties and 11 libraries at this university, uh, each discipline had at least one representative going to that uh, community of practice or that, um, that operational group. 
Now, the service, uh, ARILA stands for the Research Impact Library Advisory Service. Uh, so that was the name that we had to communicate with our researchers to make them understand what work we do and what we can help them do. So it was uh, created to undertake citation and impact reports and to support academic promotion and also grant applications. Now the service uh, aim to help the researchers uh, select the appropriate metrics to tell their story about their research impact. And those metrics came from Web of Science, Scopus, Google Scholar, SciVal, Insights, as well as Altmetric for institutions. That in, we also then worked to encourage the researchers to register for their researcher identifiers, to maintain their identifiers, uh, to publish strategically, to promote their research outputs, and also to use the institutional repository to um, uh, put their open access outputs there and make it visible. So the initial support of it was an analysis of actually the researcher's top 10 publications. Um, the service then was also marketed to researchers, to schools, to research groups, but then also expanded to encompass uh, analysis for faculty and school reviews, uh, recruitment, strategic publishing, collaboration, visualizations, research profiles, and training. So this service evolved over time uh, it, um, to advocate for the use of researcher profiles, as I already mentioned, as well as uh, presenting practical skills uh, focus on researcher profiles, strategic publishing and tracking citations. So we basically were training up the researchers to take to participate in their own um, data collection and you know making sense out of that data. So our service has shifted, but it's also expanded to include new tools. We uh, started introducing Altmetric Explorer and Dimensions of Digital Science. And in 2016, we then did a review of the service. And the result of that was that we created self-help guides, lip guides to educate researchers how to work with these data tools. And, um, so we are still evolving uh, and we're also doing benchmarking and assisting with impact reports. But in recent years, our librarians have also assisted with uh, other things. Australian Research Council has a, a research management system where the researchers have to upload their publications. And some of us um, were supporting researchers in that area as well. So I think now, um, we uh, will talk about our experience, Sarah. Yep. Yes. So um, as probably all of you have done, we have really learned as we have gone. We developed a lot of skills. Um, neither Francie or I really knew what bibliometrics were when the service first started all those years ago. Um, we've been really fortunate to have training and really great support from um, people at Clarivate who make web of science at Elsevier with Scopus and SciVal. Um, we've had several visits over the years from their trainers to train library staff and also people involved in research administration. Um, We've also had training from people at Digital Science to help us understand how to use altmetrics better to support our researchers. And we are always constantly learning. Um, we learn from each other. We work with our colleagues um, across the library. Uh, we work together in little teams on different projects and to support colleagues who um, who have to respond to different needs in their faculties. So we have colleagues in um, creative disciplines like fine arts and music, where traditional metrics are much more difficult to come by, but their expertise in um, looking in more unexpected places is really helpful for us when we don't really, um, if we have a colleague or a researcher who is, working in creative disciplines, for example, in architecture, building and planning, a lot of the um, architects are uh, having creative outputs like plans and exhibitions. And I would always consult my colleagues in fine arts and music to help um, sort of understand how to represent their research. Um, 
disciplines like law are not very well represented in the citation databases like Scopus, so that um, requires different challenges um, to kind of support them better. Yes, and certainly we've also been um, joining up with colleagues in other universities through um, something that happened annually here in Australia is called a Research Support Community Day, usually in February, uh, where um, we have come together as a much bigger unit and learned from each other there through case studies. So the collaboration just keeps on happening, really. It does, um, yes. So where are we now with the service? Um, you'll see on the left-hand side, this is the template we used to use. It was very formal when the, the service first started. Um, we would give the, the person who'd requested the research impact report uh, a very formal letter with all the, the figures on it, with lots of spreadsheets. Um, we still do do some reports, but we've also moved towards more creative interpretations of data. And we saw that with some of the previous speakers um, talking about all the data visualization. So this is a chord diagram that was developed by one of our colleagues, Lindy Cochran, who supports um, the medical biosciences faculty. Um, she used, um, she taught herself how to do this, demonstrating co-author networks using VOSViewer and data from Scopus and Cybell. And if a researcher ever asked me for one of these, I would have to ask her because I have no idea um, how to do it. But our initial process was quite, quite complex and we've come to realise that a, a more simple replicable, replicable approach is better because it enables researchers to undertake the work themselves. And one of the things I learned quite early on in doing um, citation impact reporting was that it, it is best if the results that you, you find can be repeated by the researchers so they can understand them um, and they can repeat them if, if they need to or if any questions arise. Um, so that's where we are at the moment, um, really yes, trying so to empower researchers. Definitely. So and I think that's just, you know, um, something that's really great in this type of work that you can um, do those sort of things that you know, you can refresh um, your skill set that way. Um, in terms of just um, um, handing, talking back in terms of where are we now, Sarah? Um, where do you think we're heading to? We basically, you know, um, maybe we can very briefly talk about this. Um, yes. Just to get so through. Yes, I know we're going to run out of time soon. Yeah. Um, so we're still grappling with non-traditional research outputs. Um, bibliometrics training pretty much globally isn't included in librarianship studies, so we're all learning on the job. Um, as I said before, we're moving quickly towards building a narrative to support evidence of impact. And many of us librarians feel the need for further training um, in areas such as data science, ethics, coding, visualization tools, as we've been shown today, there's a lot of complexity in that. Things like using APIs, pivot tables, which is something I don't need, to, I have no idea how to use. Um, and keeping on top of new tools, such as um, dimensions, altmetrics, understanding field-weighted citation impacts. So all the things that have been mentioned today are things we need to really keep on top of. That I believe too. Um, so we have gone to talk to one of our colleagues, Eleanor Collar, Program Manager for Scholarly Development at the University of Melbourne, to learn from her about her interesting career. And I'm sure that it's going to be just as interesting to all of you as well. But before we got to that point, uh, we just thought it's a good time to just compare our different um, pathways, basically, in this area quickly. Sarah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought comparing the way we've, um, our careers have developed, uh, Francie and I have kind of developed like a big old tree growing 
um, over time, we've been developing our skills and knowledge, gradually building them up. Eleanor um, has had a much faster career trajectory with a really rapid um, learning curve. So hopefully we have time to play this interview with her. It goes for 10 minutes, so it might eat into the rest of our presentation time, but I hope you find it useful. That will be great. I'm listening to Eleanor and uh, we're going to do that now. So we asked her six questions and she responded to all of them very nicely. Thanks, Eleanor. Hello, my name is Eleanor Collar and I'm the Program Manager, Scholarly Development Research at the University of Melbourne Library. In this role, I work with a number of colleagues within the library and across the university to coordinate and deliver central research support services. This includes regular webinars on a number of applicable topics and information on the University of Melbourne's Research at Library website, as well as events such as the Visualise Your Thesis program. Professionally, I am interested in topics regarding embedding information literacy skills throughout the research life cycle, analysing the intersections of research support offered across universities, and how librarianship as a profession can continue to develop. Something I enjoy outside of work is drinking poor tea, gong fu style. I completed my Master's of Information Management from RMIT University in 2015 and was fortunate to be awarded a graduate position for an entry level job through the Queensland University Library Office of Cooperation. Commencing in 2016, this position ran for 12 months and throughout, I worked at four different university libraries across the state of Queensland. Having four different roles in a 12 month period was a fantastic opportunity to learn not only the breadth of librarianship undertaken in tertiary libraries, but also how different libraries and indeed the broader university environments could work. The roles I had within the program were very varied and covered positions and duties such as research support liaison librarian, archives assistant, front desk officer, working in a music library and a fine art library, creating an online research support program, open publishing support officer and a metric specialist. It was this last area that really took my interest and something I developed further after finishing up with the graduate program. I think I was quite drawn to this area of research support as it seemed to be quite an emerging field. It hadn't even been mentioned in my library degree that I'd just completed. And with a lot of interest being shown from not just librarians, but researchers and research officers it also allowed me to have some very nuanced conversations with colleagues and researchers about these topics, which I found very engaging. Around the same time as well within Australia was the introduction of the engagement and impact assessment exercise, which was run by the Australian Research Council. Seeing how this field influenced and was influenced by so many other areas also drove my interest. In the metric specialist role I initially held, I was provided with a lot of on the shelf training. The team I was working with worked solely on bibliometrics, producing reports at school, faculty and institutional levels, as well as provided training and advice to liaison librarians who were conducting metrics reports for individual researchers within their disciplines and faculties. What was of greatest benefit perhaps was despite being a graduate librarian, very little experience, I was working with some very experienced librarians and I was also working in an environment that was really supportive. I was encouraged to ask questions, present potential solutions to problems I encountered and was included in quite high level conversations where my opinion was sought out. All of this led to me ongoing back to this team after the program finished. I was encouraged to learn skills that were not new, just new to me, but to the team. This led me to investigate how we could visually represent bibliometric data, for example. 
I eventually proposed how this could be included, wrote workflow and instructions on this, and trained my colleagues so the whole team had an expanded skill set. Based on this work, I went on to co facilitate a workshop at the Australasian Research Management Society Conference in 2017, where I taught others about this as well. Not long after this, I left this role and I moved to an institution where I was a research liaison librarian. In this new role, I needed to support researchers in many different elements of liaison librarianship, such as publishing advice, reference management software, research data management, and yes, bibliometrics. This new role also gave me the opportunity to upskill my new colleagues and indeed the whole institution. I focused on not just how librarians can find metrics, but how we can have conversations with researchers about them. I think our video is frozen, Francie. Maybe we should move on um, yes, with the rest um, of the presentation. Yes, certainly you will be able to listen to the video after the session. So you can continue listening to the video as it's embedded. So um, I'm really I'm just going to stop that now. So we just get through the rest of the um, presentation. Everyone, apologies. Um, so um, we were just um, hoping to get your, uh, if you can go back to the poll link that you used previously, um, and um, I'll just ask you to um, give us a, an idea of what you think uh, librarians bring to bibliometrics, why they're good at bibliometrics. So I'm just going to... Um... So if you could now please go to the poll link uh, that we've shared with you before um, and I'll put thank it in you. there for oh, you thank again. You, um, I'll just put it in for everyone. Um, While people are putting in their responses, um, I might outline why we think librarians should work with bibliometrics. Um, librarians are trusted. We have access, access to physical spaces um, and researchers. Bibliometrics um, contains a, an information literacy component which librarians are trained at and we're good at. And researchers want to make sense of a, a diversity of tools as we've seen today, there's a lot of tools and librarians are really well placed to do that. Um, it also includes lots of information technology components and generally librarians do use a diversity of tools and applications. We've seen lots of tools being demonstrated today. Um, and we can support others to simplify the complexity around bibliometrics. Also, kind of turning that around, working with researchers allows librarians to understand the research space and publishing practices, which allows us to better build relationships um, with researchers and research administrators and colleagues. And so I'm thank really you aware. for your participation. Sorry, so I'm really aware that we probably need to get through our time uh, and we probably would skip this next two polls. But yes. the idea of it was to get your, uh, your thinking about those things you already have and what would you like to work on? But uh, that is all contained in these eight uh, main categories that we identified through scanning the literature and just sort of thinking how it worked for us as well in terms of where we see the skills. So Sarah, over to you. Yeah, so I think um, if you have a think about these skills, probably a lot of you will have some of them already, especially things like communication and relationship skills and, and critical thinking skills, which um, if you're drawn to the profession of librarianship, you probably already have. And if you've got those, you can build up your skills in all the other areas, um, like the traditional and alternative metrics, the benchmarking, you may already have metadata skills, so you understand how that works. Um, and as we've seen, there's some pretty complex spreadsheet and visualization tools that you may want to um, 
learn about. We've definitely learned about some of them. We've learned about quite a lot of them today. Um, so we have, just to finish up, at the end of these slides, which we have shared, um, a whole package of resources to build bibliometric skills that you might want to take some time after today to have a browse through. Um, Francie's put through a, a very comprehensive list for you. Um, and please feel free to put some questions um, in the Slido that um, our the committee has prepared. And I think we will end there. Thank you very much for inviting us today. We really enjoyed being here and presenting to you. Sure, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening to us today. Thank you very much, Ms. Sarah Sherin and Ms. Francine Nord for sharing about Michael's current prospect as a bibliometric analyzer. This was uh, very interesting, and hopefully, it can inspire uh, the librarian and library and information science students to have a career as a bibliometric specialist. And, um, okay. All right, everyone, that was our last presentation of the session. Now it's time for question and answer session. Okay, uh, let's see. Now uh, we can see the question. Uh, we have about 40 minutes for question and answer. And I see some of you have already submitted the question on the slide. Okay. So the first the uh, question is um, from Bayu Sumantri, Universitas Pajajaran. Can bibliometric tools be combined, for example, post-work with digital signing? If so, what are the requirements for incorporating bibliometric analyzing, analysis tools? Uh, question, this question is for Mr. Prabhu. Uh, this question is a uh, question and answer. So, uh, please, Mr. Rabu, can answer okay. this question. Yeah, this is a very good question, actually. So, can it be combined? Of course, yes. So, uh, if we uh, if we take a look at other papers, like uh, explaining about bibliometrics, there are a lot of papers that combine uh, some of the tools. For example, like uh, mostly they combine Excel because uh, Excel can provide like basics or descriptive uh, analytics of bibliographic data. And they combine with, for the social network analysis, they usually use Phosphor. So yes, of course, you can combine the two, uh, tools and you can combine Phosphor with BioSigny as, uh, as well. And for the query requirements, so uh, as I mentioned before, to decide which uh, tool set is uh, I mean, relevant or uh, useful for our study, so we can uh, take a look or at the data that we have. So for example, if we have uh, complete data, uh, for example, we have citation number and yeah, we can use uh, for example, like Phosphor. So, but if we only have like descriptive data such as years or uh, for example, like title or authors, well, maybe it's enough to use like a simple software such as Excel. So. Uh, the requirements is de depends on the objective of the study itself and also the data that we have. So I think that's uh, what I can elaborate from this question. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Prabhu. Uh, and the second question is for Ms. Uh, Sarah and Ms. Wensi from Un Universitas di Ponegoro, Lisa Tiwati. What are the competency academic librarians should have uh, they want to provide a diplomatic analysis as a research support services? Okay, uh, you can. Uh, the, the, 
presentation before the skill meeting. Okay, the please Miss Sarah and Miss Rosie answer this question. Um, yeah, I think we, we covered it a little bit just at the end there. Um, I think um, I think communication skills are, are one of the most important competencies um, because you need to have good written and verbal communication to be able to listen to understand what researchers want. Um, it's really good to understand how to use the different databases and um, understand the limitations of each of the databases as Mr. Jesse was pointing out, they're all a yeah. little bit different. Yes, uh, I agree. And you have to basically be able to simplify uh, um, complicated information to researchers on different different, different levels. I think that's important. Uh, and obviously um, have a, a knack for trying to work out a problem because often you are, uh, you know, thrown a, a problematic um, need for information to illustrate. So it does uh, require you to often speak to others as well and get others uh, advice about how they may approach the same problem. Yeah, I think also um, understanding what research impact is helps and that has changed over time as um, as we saw in Australia with the, the move from just focusing on the numbers to kind of looking at a whole story around um, the research. So a bit about understanding how the scholarly publishing landscape is going. Um, critical thinking skills are really important. Um, and I think generally librarians are really good at that. They're also good as, as Francie said, at problem solving. Um, uh, you, it's really good to learn about benchmarking. A lot of these things you can you can learn about by using the tools. I think um, it's definitely a process of getting involved. Um, as Eleanor said, she was thrown in in her first job, so um, maybe finding a mentor who can take you through um, the different steps and you know getting some experience helping before you can you rush in and do it. Um, I think we're quite fortunate because we, at the University of Melbourne, we focus on um, supporting one particular discipline team. So we can become quite expert in supporting that particular area because each area has different things that they need. That's yeah. a great question, thank you. So I, I take it from uh, Iquan's presentation when he said there's two types of bibliometric analysis, uh, analysis and we probably fall in more into the first category. We have other people that's really in other roles at the university that fulfill the second category very well and we just complement each other. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Francie. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Sarah and Ms. Francie. And uh, we have uh, three, uh, three questions. Uh, number three, from Yulianti, Universitas Pajajaran. Uh, what is our strategy to conduct bibliometric research when we have many study program and journal database? I want to hear personal experience of the speakers. Uh, I think this question is for all speakers, uh, perhaps um, Mr. Ikhwan first. Okay, um, thank you very much for the question. Um, okay, strategy, strategy to conduct bibliography research when we have many uh, program general databases. I I think your question is about the uh, about the choosing the databases, the general databases. Maybe okay. If you think that uh, if you want to do the uh, if you want to conduct the bibliography analysis, uh, for which which journal. Um, maybe uh, we can consider the journals that I mentioned in my presentation is a citation index database or any databases that provide the information, especially uh, in the bibliography, uh, uh, the bibliometric data. For example, uh, the, uh, uh, the basic information, for example, uh, the article title, journal title, and so on. And also, they, uh, that database can provide the uh, citation uh, metrics, okay? For example, as we know, there is Scopus, Web of Science, uh, Dimensions, Google Scholar, also they have 
provide the citation metric. So because uh, many of the stat, uh, bibliometric analysis that focus on the to profile the group or uh, I can say the group of publications and also what is the impact of that group of publications, for example, in terms of the citations and so on. Okay, so um, I can say uh, if we, sometimes uh, if we can see most of the publication, I cannot say that uh, all publication on the bibliometric analysis, but most of them, many of them, uh, they uh, only choose one or two general databases only, okay, for their uh, look at the solely uh, database or they, they want to compare because each database, they have different population. When you search, for example, you study about MFC, microbiofield cell, for example, um, when you search in the Scopus, maybe you can get, for example, 500 articles, for example. If you search in the web of science, it could be 300 uh, numbers of the publication. It could be different. So sometimes that's why they um, many of the bibliometric articles uh, that choose only one uh, citation database. But it's up to you. If you want to study about Google Scholar publication, you go to Google Scholar. If you want to go to the web of science, as corpus, but anything, please refer back to your research objective and research question. Why you choose that strategy? Why you choose database for your research uh, uh, research area? Uh, I mean, uh, why why you choose that uh, particular database? Okay, uh, that that is my answer. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ikhwan. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. JC Xiao or Ms. China Yang, you can answer this number three uh, question. Oh, okay, so probably I answer it first. So, uh, yes. so, so I think you, <clears throat> sorry, so I, guess, so I think you may choose some uh, interdisciplinary uh, database first. So such as the uh, school bus uh, web of science, <clears throat> but you can also try some uh, subject database. So if you want to analysis some uh, bibliometric uh, data, which is only uh, um, only can be found in some subject subject database, so you can also try some subject database. But uh, but it also depends on your library's budget because a lot of uh, database and the platform they need the subscription, and uh, and uh, they are also very expensive. So and and then you may also uh, choose some uh, open source uh, database such as uh, Open Alice or such as close ref so you can also get those metric from those uh, free databases so you can also try it yeah yeah i think okay um, thank you thank you very much uh miss tina yang uh would you mind to add the question uh okay so um actually i i'm not quite sure whether this is um, for um, bibliometric research um, in your study, if you are um, still a library school student for your study, or if you are a librarian, you need to do some bibliometric research and generate some research uh, per, uh, report uh, for the researchers and uh, for the university senior management. Um, in case of um, the um, in case of um, in case uh, you are my bear, you need to uh, provide some bibliometric and impact um, services. Um, in addition to um, the citation databases, different tools that you have to get familiar with, such as Scopus, uh, Web of Science. Cyval um, insights, and um, these are the traditional citation uh, databases, and um, other databases such as uh, Automatrics, um, uh, etc. is is also worth noting. So you need to get the knowledge about these um, these tools, and also you need to understand the needs of um, the request from from the, your users, from faculties, um, what they want to, what, 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 what's the purpose of this, um, of the research? Um, so then you can uh, develop the, the uh, strategies, uh, getting the bibliometric, bibliometric data and per, uh, customize the research reports, um, 
for uh, the specific uh, requests or specific needs. And um, sometimes um, you need to um, talk to um, the researchers and some stakeholders, uh, not only uh, individual researchers, but also some universities, um, for example, uh, research uh, office and uh, um, management information uh, units, um, et cetera, and to talk with them and uh, um, to have some um, collaborations on um, some research uh, uh, projects. So uh, communication skills are very important. Yeah, so that's my personal experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Tina Yang. And Mr. Prabhu Bo, uh, would you mind to answer this question? Okay. So I think this question can be answered from multiple perspectives. So as uh, answered by uh, Mr. Jesse and uh, Ms. Tina and also uh, Bapak Ikhwan, uh, actually it's already covered everything, but uh, I would like to answer this question through the perspective of uh, researchers, because uh, as a researcher, we uh, also tend to question ourselves, what is, how to conduct. So I think the best way is to know uh, we can do SWOT analysis or what we have actually. So my, what I mean, uh, what we have, we have to know, uh, we have to understand what what kind of resources what we have. So uh, what kind of access to database that we have. So uh, as a researcher, we have to know, I think we have to know resources what we have. And yeah, I think that's a question that's complemented with other uh, answers, but in the perspective of researchers, I think that's all for me. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Prabhu. And uh, Ms. Sarah Kering or Ms. Francine Out, would you mind to answer this question? Um, yes, I don't think we can add much more to what everyone else has said. It does depend on um, what databases you have access to. Um, I go to Scopus for most of my work because the people in my faculty are generally better represented on there than Web of Science. Um, but uh, people who are doing architectural history aren't well represented in any citation database. And sometimes I'll use Google Scholar, but the research administrators at the university are telling us not to use Google Scholar um, because the data is a little bit, um, we're unsure about some of the data. So it is, it is tricky, but, um, and then in law, they go through and then do manual tracking of citations. So it really does depend on the discipline. Um, yeah, I don't think I can say anything more to add to what everyone else has already said on this question. Yes, I could just perhaps say that uh, for me, it's often uh, from a user perspective, just looking at the strengths and the weaknesses of a database and how productive it's going to make you in that context. What is it what you want to do? And the other thing that sometimes determine it as well is the uh, classification schemes used in some of the areas for some of the databases. I do tend to agree with everyone on everything said and uh, like to use Scopus often uh, but then Scopus has some excellent features and Web of Science have some excellent other features and then something I also love to use because it has its own excellent features as dimensions so yeah um, just depends on what you need to do with the database. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the speakers. And we have a lot of uh, questions here. And for question number four, uh, from Ferdianto Adi Nugroho from Universitas Merdeka, Malang. Why is bibliometric analysis so important for a research journal? And what is the best software to use the, to perform bibliometric analysis? Uh, this question is for Mr. Ikhwan. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Okay, um, why is bibliometric analysis so important for research journal? Uh, 
actually when we want to do the bibliometric analysis because we have the objective um sometimes we we cannot do the bibliometric analysis uh, without the objective because um um, mostly that we do the bibliometric analysis, we want to the outcomes, okay? We want to have the result that we want to show something to the research community. If you are researchers and also you are librarian, you want to support the, our researchers and also maybe for the purpose of the research assessment for your institution. Um, so for example, as a researcher, if you uh, uh, do the bibli bibliometric analysis, Sometimes when you get the result, you can you get the findings from that uh, bibliometric analysis. You may provide the guidance actually actually uh, guide to guide the re other researchers maybe at the same field uh, to do the further uh, research about that existing research that available. Because when we do the bibli bibliometric analysis, we will study about the 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 publication or the the previous literature. So from there we can conclude at the same uh, at the certain uh, information for example uh, um, cluster in the research area for example in terms of the research area and, uh, and then we look at the research area certain of the research area that published uh, maybe at the recent year what what actually the discussion of that research area uh, uh, since last uh, maybe last two or three years so all this information all this uh, I can say the discussion we can get from the bibliometric analysis so for me uh, bibliometric analysis can be as a as a guidance actually to the research other researchers to get to know more about the what actually happened uh, with the uh, previous literature okay with the at the same field for example okay and uh for the what is the best software to use the perform bibliometric analysis, uh, uh, already I presented in my presentation uh, that my experience. I started from uh, with the uh, Microsoft Excel because I I try to uh, manipulate. Uh, we we try to analyze using the Microsoft Excel uh, to get the many information actually from the uh, bibliograph bibliographic data or bibliometric data from the uh, databases. Okay, and then you can try to get the more advanced information, related information, co-occurrence, co co-concentration and so on. You want to look at the network and also the relationship. You can try use the voice view as well because they have a lot of the software actually. But for me, I think uh, you can choose any software that you feel that you easy to use and easy to learn, all right? Okay, uh, this is my answer for question number four. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ikhwan, for the answer. Now we have uh, five, uh, number five question is for Mr. Jesse and Ms. Tina from Ainun, uh, Badan Riset Inovasi Nasional or National Research and Innovation Agency. Looking at the slices of the research evaluation and research metric uh, diagrams, can you please provide some examples of research that includes both uh, please, Mr. Jesse and Ms. Tina. Uh, okay, so thanks for your question. So I think the uh, the answer is says so. Uh, so some some subjects they can use some uh, research metrics to do part of research evaluations. So such as I I give the example in my slides says uh, life of science. Uh, so the life science. So they can use the citation per publication and the H index as part of research evaluations. So even in the uh, QS subject ranking, so they will use the citation per publication and the H index in their subject ranking. But uh, when we do the research evaluations in the in the subject life uh, in the subject life and life science, so we may not not be able to only see the research metrics. So we should also consider about other things such as the uh, such as the, the research output, the social impact and the learn the researchers' uh, reputations, etc. So we should also consider about other things. So that means uh, the research evaluation is not equally, um, uh, is not equal to the research metrics. Yeah. So that's all for my questions, uh, for my answers. Yes, I agree with uh, Jason. Um, research metrics uh, mainly focus on um, 
quantitative uh, assessment, whereas research evaluation um, focus includes both quantitative and qualitative um, assessment. Um, some disciplines like um, arts and humanities and social sciences, the um, law as well, the, um, the only research citation data is insufficient to reflect the research um, performance and research um, impact of the research. Um, so we need to look at other areas such as um, social impact, uh, media um, exposure, and also uh, peer assessment um, and other uh, qualitative uh, research assessment criteria. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Tina and Mr. Jesse. Uh, six, uh, the sixth question is from Erna Fitri from Perpustakaan Universitas Jenderal Ahmad Yani, Yogyakarta. How is the role of libraries to increasing the research rank of small, in, small institutions? Uh, this is for Mr. Jesse and Ms. Tina, and our, uh, our speaker can answer this. Uh, please, Mr. Jesse or Ms. Tina first. Okay, so probably I go first. So um, as uh, as our academic uh, as our academic librarian, so we are familiar with the uh, scholarly publishing, and we are familiar with the bibliometric. So that's why we can uh, easily to generate or analysis the university ranking report to our university uh, seniors or for some uh, department head or faculty deans to let them know. Uh, how to do some uh, do how to do the subject development in future, so they can see uh, what kind of metric they are relatively low, compare with, compare with other peers. So uh, is I so I think this is our role to to compare those report to university senior or faculty or subject uh, seniors. Yeah. Um. Yes. Um. Actually. Uh... Um, we we um, can make use of our um, uh, the tools, the databases, uh, the, met the metric data to analyze the weakness and the strengths of um, the individual researchers, uh, departments, faculties, and uh, universities as a as a whole. Um, so we can provide some advice on how they can improve. Um, their uh, research performance. Um, not only, uh, uh, of course, they have to really um, um, strong in research, but sometimes the researchers do not know how to um, make use of the, um, how to present their uh, research uh, outputs. For example, uh, we can give, some, give them some advice on what journals they can um, they, they, uh, are suitable for uh, their research, and also how can they make their research more visible to increase their research visibility and make their research well known to others. Um, for example, um, we ask them to uh, we, we train them to how to manage their researcher profile such as the Scopus, author, ID, uh, Pavlum, uh, uh, researcher ID, et cetera. So, um, and also uh, create, their, create their own ORCID ID uh, to make sure that um, the, their, uh, they are credited for their research, um, for their own research. And also for the university and the university level, we um, we work with our management information unit, um, which is uh, under the president's office to um, verify the affiliation, the um, organization affiliation in Scopus, uh, because this is used for university ranking, world um, uh, higher education, uh, times higher education university ranking. So we work with uh, the MIU and also uh, the, the faculties and uh, uh, 
other campus units to um, verify and update the affiliations every year. Um, yeah, we also um, work with the stakeholders to verify the uh, highly cited researchers for Hong Kong U. Um, so this, th there are many ways for us to contribute to the to the rank of the of the university. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sarah, Ms. Tina, and me, Mr. Uh, Jesse. Uh, now we go to another question. Question number seven. Question number seven, please, committee. If there any, okay, there is another question. Uh, this question for Mr. Jesse and Ms. Tina. Uh, perhaps you can uh, answer in uh, briefly or short answer. Uh, from Ferry, what was the primary benefit by doing the analysis of bibliometric for the institution and the author of their papers? They work on research. Are they gonna be having a lot of citations? So the paper or research were cited by the the other is a good one or popular issue for some times ahead. Uh, please, Mr. Jesse or Ms. Tina, you can answer in short uh, answer. Yeah. Uh, okay. So probably I go first. So the um, primary benefit is, so when we collect all the uh, publication information for our uh, universities, and then we can easily generate the department level, faculty, faculty level of the uh, research performance report. And then the seniors can very easily to see uh, which researcher uh, performance is better. And also, uh, they can see the researchers' uh, publication trend and how, and they can also identify those uh, popular or hot, highly cited paper in the department or in the faculty. So, and also we have some uh, research trend functions in our report. So we can see so uh, which kind of research topic is have has the high prominent percentile and uh, how many of Hong Kong U uh, publication are in this. Uh, a topic and then the seniors can easily find uh, uh, our uh, distributions in the different uh, research topics. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Tina. Uh, yes, I think um, bibliometric service is very important for the libraries to uh, show the library's role in supporting the university research. Um, traditionally, um, library um, uh, has been certain uh, uh, is good and uh, and supporting teaching, learning, um, and uh, uh, collection development. Um, some uh, traditional um, tasks. However, um, a bibli bibliometric service uh, is uh, evolving uh, very fast. So, um, because there is a need from the uh, university and different levels and the university level and department and faculty and researcher level. Um, so we, um, I, I can give you an example. So uh, until 2020, um, the senior management, university senior management real, um, barely and approach the library um, to find out more about our, um, uh, what library could offer to, um, to, um, to support the university um, promotion, tenure, and uh, recruitment. Then uh, in 2020, we uh, have we had a, a new um, vice president for res for recruitment, uh, for academic development, and research. So they came to the the, the approach the library. They came to the library and uh, had the meetings, numerous meetings with us to discuss how the library could support the senior management. 
um, in decision making. So from then on, um, we have been um, uh, trans, uh, we have been um, relocating some library resources, limited library resources into the um, research support area that uh, we, we focus on bibliometric uh, services. So um, we have recently um, built a scholars intelligence hub, which includes uh, the, bibli uh, the bibliometric data for uh, researchers and faculties and the departments. And this, this in-house um, database is open to the uh, senior management, faculty, deans, uh, department heads, and the university's uh, committee for promotion and tenure, and, um, and also recruitment. So they um, think this database is very, is very useful. So I, I think that, um, I think there are a lot of benefits uh, in providing such services. And this is um, uh, an opportunity for libraries to, to justify our resources and our status in, um, in supporting the strategic development of the university. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Tina, Mr. Uh, uh, Jesse. And I think we, we were sorry because of limited time. Now we've come to the end of question and answer. And uh, we apologize. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot answer all of your questions today. So um, that's for the question. In the final five minutes, I would like to ask our speakers for their, uh, for their final talks mm, to, let's start with Mr. Prabhu. Do you have any closing statement? Thank you, Mr. Uh, so I think one of the statement uh, is for in perspective of uh, researchers. <clears throat> so um, yeah, bibliometrics is very useful for many, you know, many, uh, it has a lot of benefits. So for researchers, we can get a lot of, you know, overview over something on, on specific disciplines. So I think uh, it can be a useful tool for, uh, it can be useful by knowing bibliometrics. We can, uh, we can, you know, understand about what happens in specific field, the trends and everything. I think, uh, and for the librarians, I think uh, they can help researchers by, uh, providing, you know, like uh, some kind of like workshop maybe or uh, tutorial or something. So I think, uh, and also can be useful for other, uh, for, for example, like for uh, recruiting for school, for the university to increase the ranking, to increase the exposure of the university itself. So I think uh, it's very good to have this conversation about bibliometrics. So I think that's a closing for me. Thank you very much, Mr. Prabhu. And uh, that was very uh, interesting and is, uh, insightful. Now uh, for Mr. Ikhwan, do you have any advice for our participants? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, when we go back to the our roles, especially for the librarians, because I'm also the librarians. So the librarian, they have two roles. We, we support our researchers and also we provide the information uh, to the uh, uh, bibliometric information to the, our institution. So uh, before we want to play the roles, we must have, uh, we must develop our skills and knowledge first, uh, especially in the bibliometric analysis. Uh, we can develop through our, uh, any training, we can join any training uh, that, uh, that uh, provide uh, that provided uh, for the bibliometric analysis, and also we can also self learning uh, on this bibliometric analysis because uh, I believe that uh, that's my experience. If you want to explore, for example, uh, bibliometric tools, especially voice viewer, uh, space or even Excel, it takes take time actually. Okay, because maybe you can learn one training. Training is about one day, but after that you 
must self learn you must explore and then you must utilize all these uh, bibli bibliometric uh, software or tools okay uh, so that that is my uh, suggestion my advice and also it is not for uh, all of you it is also for me okay to keep learning about the bibliometric analysis uh, thank you very much for the organizer uh, for inviting me uh, for today event i hope that we can uh, uh collaborate uh after this okay all right thank you very much thank you very much mr ikhwan next miss sarah and miss Francie. Uh, do you have a closing statement for today um i'd like to echo what everyone else has said i think the most important thing so she as mr ikhwan just said is to keep learning keep practicing i guess the other um, side of that is to build your networks with your other colleagues who may have different skills in the area and keep talking to them and sharing each other's skills because I think um, librarians as a profession are very collegial and we like to teach each other and help each other and collaborate. So I think we're our own best friends and we can all learn from each other all the time. I echo what, uh, thank you very much. I echo what Sarah is saying there. And uh, very much I uh, agree that um, sometimes it's also about listening, uh, listening when we communicate, but also uh, thinking about your own identity in this work and um, thinking about which identity you identify most. Is it a communicator? Is it a technologist? Is it a trainer? Is it a leader? Uh, is it the statistician and then um, going because we can't all be across all of those areas we can support each other though okay thank you very much uh, Ms. Uh, Francy and Ms. Sarah Kerry uh, now finally for uh, Ms. Tina Young and Mr. Jesse uh, do you have any closing statement um, so this is a very um, um, inspiring webinar. I have learned um, the views from different perspectives from uh, Liberian, liaison librarians, from researchers and librarians. So um, for to the audience, uh, if you are a librarian, um, um, please um, you know keep your mind open and keep updated with the latest trends in, in the library field, um, especially the emergent trends in research um, and scholarly communications. And for the um, library school stu students, um, uh, you may wish to know that um, the uh, um, that um, the scholarly communication and research support is an area that uh, uh, need a lot of, uh, you know, future um, is a potential area that we, we need a lot of uh, staff with uh, um, related uh, skill sets and expertise. So keep, uh, keep um, talking to your, uh, to, the, to your libraries and the librarians and uh, um uh, learn learn uh, keep learning and uh, you will have a, a bright future thank you yeah, so yes i agree with tina so as the academic librarian so we have a lot of things to learn the different database uh, different metrics different types so so we have new metrics so probably have, in future we should include the, like the data metrics session and also, as uh, we also consider about as we already corroborate a lot of data in our libraries, and also we should consider about how to visualize those, those data. And also, we should learn like the data visualization scale to better present our bibliometric data to everyone. Yes, so that's all for my comments. Yes, thank you. Okay, great. All right, everybody. Uh, let's give big applause to our speakers by giving a reaction in your Zoom menu. Uh, okay, with the closing statement from the speaker, we reach the end of our session now. On behalf of the webinar committee, I would like to thanks to Mr. Jesse Xiao, Ms. Tina Yang, Mr. Muhammad Ikhwan, Ms. Sarah, uh, Ms. Sarah Shering, 
Ms. Francinaud and Mr. Prabu Wibowo for sharing your knowledge, expertise, and experience with us, and also for coming to in Universitas Indonesia, even though virtually. Hopefully, we can have opportunity to build better networking and collaboration with all of you in the future. In the meantime, we hope you stay healthy and stay safe. Uh, now uh, we have arrived at the handover of the virtual certificate for the speakers. We invite Mrs. Maria willing to give virtual certificates to speaker. First to Mr. Prabhu Ibowo. Uh, masih mute. Uh, still mute, Mr. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, uh, Miss uh, Lulu. Uh, okay, uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my appreciation to the speakers and panelists for their valuable contribution to our international webinar today. My deepest gratitude goes to all who attended uh, the webinar and helped to make it such a successful event. Thank you very much, Mr. Prabhu Wibowo, for your invaluable contribution being the speaker of UL Library International webinar today. Yeah, we hope you so are yeah, okay. We hope you are healthy and <laughs> and have more success in the future, Mr. Prabhu. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, next. Thank you. Next for Mr. Ikhwan. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ikhwan, for your invaluable contribution being the speaker of UA Library International Webinar today. It's been an honor to meet you, and we hope our library can collaborate more in the future. Hello, thank you very much. Okay, thank you are welcome. Okay. Okay, the next. Okay, next for Mr. Jesse. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Jesse Xiao. It's been an honor to meet you, and thank you for your invaluable contribution being the speaker of our international webinar today. Your presentation gave us inspiration, and we hope we can implement it in our library. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, and next for Ms. Tina Yang. Okay, next. Thank you, Ms. Tina Yang. It's been a pleasure and honor to meet you too. And we hope our library can collaborate more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, for Ms. Sarah Sering. Okay, next. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Sarah Kering. It's been an honor to meet you and thank you for your invaluable contribution being the speaker of our international webinar today. We hope that from your presentation, all participants get, uh, can get more knowledge about the potential career of being a librarian, especially in bibliometric analysis. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. And for Ms. Uh, Francine out, please. Okay, next. Thank you, Ms. Francine out. It's been an honor to meet you and thank you for your invaluable contribution being the speaker of our international webinar today. We also hope the from now our library can collaborate more in the future. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Maria, and for all the speakers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before entering the quiz session, I would like to remind all of participants to please fill out the attendance list. You can click the link on the chat to fill out the attendance form. The link can only be accessed until 3 p.m. Jakarta time. Webinar materials and a certificate will be sent by email. Okay, now we enter the quiz session. I invite Ms. Pratiwi to guide our quiz today. There will be five attractive prizes for five winners. Let's start, Ms. Pratiwi. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Lulu. I hope my sound is clear. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hi, everyone. What do you feel after listening inspiring material from speaker? Are you still excited? Do you have some energy to join this quiz? 
because it's time to relax your body and have fun. This is a squeeze time, so I hope all of you will join this quiz. But for speakers, moderator, and committee can take this quiz. I'm so sorry, only the participant can join this quiz. Okay. Let's get the move. And today, my friend, Mrs. Nurbaini, will help me to share screen uh, the quiz session. Please, Mrs. Nur. Okay, everyone, grab your laptop, smartphone, or tablet, or anything else, and make sure stable internet and type in your browser, join myquiz.com, and enter quiz code one one nine five eight six okay i will wait for you to give you a time to join this quiz because we have five souvenir exclusive souvenir from ui library this is the rare item you can get in anywhere and any store they don't have our souvenir okay this is very exclusive so you must join this quiz to win the souvenir. Okay, uh, I hope that those who have won quiz at the University Indonesia Library webinar can provide opportunity for those who haven't, yeah? So I wait until there may be 70 participants or 15 or more i want more participants to join this quiz because it's so easy to answer this quiz if you listen carefully about what speaker speak you can answer this quiz very easy i swear eh? okay this is six five six. okay i count down one okay one two three okay let's get started the first question there are two bibliographic data source except be careful with the okay okay is this right okay let's move the next question What is the next question? There are things to consider to choose what tools and software to use in bibliometrics. Okay. And next question is What is the question? Now, measure and monitor the resource and impact of scholarship and research through online interaction in the in a definition of wow you are very fast to answer this question yeah i think you very enough to focus the matter in this webinar okay this the is the first part question now we have eight question in this quiz okay i wish you luck in this question let's the next skill that we need for bibliometric surface what is that can you guess the answer okay well okay this question next is what does real stand for Wow, okay. It's time up. So I think the competition for the winner is very tight, yeah. Okay. And the question is well, okay, I'm sorry, I can see the question, but time is up. I hope you luck. And this is the last question. And this is the last question. I wish you luck in this last question. Okay, I think you are more expert to answer the question. Okay, let's see who is the winner. 
with the highest score well, where is winner okay we will uh, we can write the winner is from the quiz okay maybe this is the winner I hear the sound from podium position but we can see the winner okay maybe the committee can inform you in the chat box who is the winner five winners uh, can get the five exclusive souvenir from UI library and for the winner so please contact us by whatsapp don't forget use indonesia country code plus six two and then input number eight nine six five two zero seven Oh, we have, oh, I'm informed from committee. The winner is Pratiwi Amber, and second is Eliana, third is Ardita, fourth is Unita Detrina, and the last winner is Faiz, with Z, with Z, yeah. Faiz, okay, congratulations for the winner. We will send the university, universitas library exclusive souvenir for the winner. But don't forget to contact us by WhatsApp. Use Indonesian country code plus 62 and then input number 896520768802 with Miss Intan. Inform your name, address, phone number to use to process delivering the gift. And the winner who live abroad, please be patient. Don't get mad with us because it take more time to arrive. We will use by international shipping. And thank you for joining this quiz for your attention. I apologize for my mistake. We will meet again in the next quiz, in the next webinar from UI Library. See you. I return to more. I return to the more moderator, Miss Lulu. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Pratiwi. Very interesting quiz and congratulations for our five winners. Okay, and I would like uh, also like to announce three selected question and answer participants who will get prizes from the UI library. Okay. Uh, okay, the lucky questioners are from Uh, Ferdianto Adni Nugroho, Universitas Merdeka, Unmar Malang. And uh, the second is uh, for Ainun, uh, Badan Riset Inovasi Nasional. And the third is Erna, uh, Erna Fitri, Perpustakaan Universitas Jenderal Ahmad Yani, Yogyakarta. And for uh, quiz winner is first for Pat Pratiwi Ambar, second Eliana, Uh, third is for Ardita, for Unita, and five Faiz. Congratulations again. Please revert to the information sound on your screen and chat box to claim your prize. And I would like to remind you again to fill out the attendance from sound on the screen. The committee will also write down the attendance link on the chat box. Attendance link can only be accessed until 3 p.m. Jakarta time. Materials and a certificate will be sent by email maximum three days after the webinar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to inform you that the next agenda is photo session. All participants, please to open the camera. Okay. Okay, Mr. Hanafi, you may lead the photo session now. Okay, photo session. I will start. One, two, three. Next. One, two, three. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hanafi, and uh, thank you for everyone who for participating in the photo session. 
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Universitas Indonesia Library, we, we would like to say, say thank for your active participation today and have a great rest for, uh, of your day. And thank you very much for the speakers, for all the speakers, and uh, hope we can meet again in another, in another time. The next UI Library International Webinar topic is Salami Slicing in Publication to Support Research Ethics. If you have any question, do not hesitate to contact us via email at pro.lib at ui at ac.id. Thank you for who support this event, especially iGroup, Elsevier, and UI Store. See you another webinar. I'm Lulu Triwulandari. Signing off. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Lulu. Thank you very much, uh, Mas Prabu. Thank you very much. Uh,